welcome back to the Giant Beast Cast. Here we are. It is Thursday, July 2nd, Friday, July 3rd, 2020, episode 267. Bacalar, you can type again. It's fine now. It's fine. The music will cover up your typing noise. Get back to whatever you were doing. I'm joined by Alex Navarro. How are you? Well, I'm not typing, so things thank must be going great over wow, here. Wow, thank you for not typing. Jeff Bacalar. Uh, Hello, how are you fine people doing? Uh, you know, uh, getting through the end of the week here. We got a short one, a shorter week than normal. Uh, we're going to be not here tomorrow. It is uh, in the States here. It's what they call July 4th, what they call Independence Day. And uh, we, get, uh, we get Friday off, which, uh, oh, man. Friday off sounds like a nice thing right now. So we won't be streaming tomorrow if you're watching this live. Uh, we will be pretty sure. Yeah. Pretty sure a whole lot of people got Thursday off too because <laughs> the bars across the street from my apartment last night uh, were action packed. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Wow. Huh. Huh. Well, uh, huh. Can we talk about that for just a hot, hot second? Yeah, sure. I will gladly it. talk about that for a hot, hot second. What would you like to know, Jeff Bacalar? I just getting hot. It's hotter. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, I guess maybe you know. It's been a while since we've talked about specifically like the things of uh, of, of like what our states are allowing and stuff like that. And I, mm -hmm. I, I maybe I just want to talk things out with you guys a little bit. Well, so, take, I, like, yeah. so, okay. here, take the temperature. I got it. Yeah. I, is this? Uh, I, I feel like you're you're scolding me for this. Is that okay? No. Like, no, no, no. Like a sc okay. scolding hot? You mean like scalding hot? I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so here's what it is. Uh, they canceled in room like dining and like you know inside stuff, uh, which was supposed to open up next week, I believe. Yes. Uh, same outdoor, with Jersey. Outdoor bars, restaurants, serving all that stuff is currently still open, and I'm. I don't remember exactly what the mask regulations are in New York right now. I'm not sure that they're fully required. Uh, if they are, then I'm going to say that the people at the bars across the street were definitely not enforcing that shit in the mm -hmm. slightest uh, because I saw a handful of masks and I saw a whole bunch of people without them. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's all I got. I, I mean, I guess for me, it's like, so I actually, for the first time in a very long time, mm -hmm. did the outdoor dining thing mm -hmm. uh, where we were basically at a table outdoors, basically by ourselves. We went very late, we went like 830 at night. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was a very bizarre experience to say the least. And I know, like, again, we follow all the, the guidelines from the state of New Jersey and everything that like. And it still feels so weird, and I I don't know. That's Maybe okay. It's, it's weird it, 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 because like, it is weird. It should talk it out. Yeah. yeah, it should feel weird because it, the whole it thing is, is bizarre. Yeah, it, totally. Um, yeah, I don't know. But then you see these things where like there are. I mean, that's why they walked it back in New Jersey too, because there were so many uh, bars and restaurants kind of just you know turning turning away and, and looking the other <sighs> way and and not uh, playing by the rules. I don't know. I everything just feels very um precarious yeah. and uh well, on very thin ice I, I let's just know. call it what it is i mean a whole bunch of this country just decided that it was time to get back to normal before well before it was even remotely safe to do so 100%. and i mean and even in new york where cases have not started spiking upward again yet that i'm aware of uh it still feels like people are a little too uh energetic when it comes to trying to put themselves back into the world, or at least as far back into the world as the the current regulations allow, right? And you know, part of the reason they canceled like the the you know the in restaurant dining stuff was because California you know opened a bunch of that stuff up, and then cases started going haywire there again. And you look at like Arizona, you look at Texas, you look at a lot of you know the states that you know opened up a lot earlier, and where they're at right now, it's very easy to imagine states like New York and New Jersey that more or less got things, uh, I would say, pretty much under control, not entirely. Sure. Uh, immediately wanting to make sure that, that they do not end up where those other states have, have started to end up. It's a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. Oh. It's a mess. It's a mess. And uh, welcome to the Giant Bees cast where, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, a, hey, where it's a mess. It's, it's also I a mess. 
No, this if is this is where hey, shit, no, I, 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 I've said this before. This is also for us where we get to get together uh, with friends and talk about stuff, and you know, it's a mess. And and politi and uh, the way stuff gets politicized, a science can get politicized. Uh, is also a mess and it does not yeah. make this any easier uh and it's gonna boy i can't wait until there uh, well first of all yes i cannot wait until there is a vaccine and boy i cannot wait until that becomes a a, a thing to be debated political thing yeah, yeah. Well, okay let's um <laughs> thanks for the best <sighs> hi jeff Backler. hi alex i know i'm fr i'm fried listen before we even start this i am i am so frazzled and so uh, my, there is no respite at this point. It's caught up with me in a kind of a bad way because, um, all the stuff we do, it's been a, it's been a hell of a couple of weeks for all, so many reasons. And then with the kids and stuff like that, there's no like, okay, I'm going to go just go chill out in a room. It is like immediately after I'm done here, it is go, um, you know, interact with the kids who are like fighting and doing their own thing and touching and pulling and stop touching me and doing this and the whole thing. And it's tough. It's starting to bleed over in not great ways. And, and you know, it's hard to compartmentalize and then for a couple of hours, try and find that time. And then, it, then it's weird. Cause I start getting really snippy if the kids aren't going to bed right away. And it's like, <laughs> because it's like, this is my only yeah. time. Now you're eating up my time. It's now nine o'clock. You're not sleeping yet. How are you not sleeping yet? I only have like an hour or two left. Um, how can I decompress? So it's uh it's catching up in a in a way that hey if you don't see me on the site for like a month to a year to, <laughs> to, to, to I'm gonna take some PTO I've built it up uh, and, and that's kind of where I'm at anyway hi Jeff Backlar hi Alex Navarro um, hi there is a, we had a very heavy episode last time but I don't I don't mean this to start this off in a heavy way but this is a um, this usually about this time of the year we do a stream uh, when we're all in the office. We have a little eagle rare, and it's usually kind of to remember the passing of Ryan Davis, who who passed away. Boy, what is it now? It's um, seven years. Seven years. Uh, he passed away on July third, um, and so we usually uh, have a nice little uh, toast and uh, eagle rare because he introduced me to eagle rare. It's the one whiskey I like. So I, I want to uh, pay some respects there and say we miss you, uh, Ryan. Uh, there are so many people, or there are a lot of people now that don't uh, even know who he was <laughs> that are new to the site. Uh, and if you don't, he was very influential. He's one of the founders of the site. Influenced my life a lot. Um, and, you know, uh, 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 as deeply flawed and human as the rest of us, but I miss him dearly. Uh, and he, he was uh, um, a, a very... Uh, influential part in my life and especially the giant bomb mm -hmm. giant bomb part of my life and if you haven't seen any of his stuff um on the site if you're new to the site you should go check it out it's very funny he's an extremely funny person and uh i, I um yeah i'm sorry to, to cut you off i i just wanted to get this out before i um you know uh, didn't have a chance I, I unfortunately never got to meet ryan uh and and i I have this sort of like legacy through osmosis through you guys you know he was very much uh, I, I joined, unfortunately, after, or at least joined the Beast cast um, after uh, he had passed away. And I wish I knew him. I wish I got to know him. And just seeing his stuff and how much uh, you guys talk about him, I uh, it just really is like a, an amazing kind of thing. And yeah, that's, that's he, it. I, I've never really been able to talk about that, but yeah. Yeah. He, he was uh he was a, a person <clears throat> I'll, I'll say this he was a person who could uh uh could, could be very funny and cut you down and you'd laugh with him like it was a, it was a very it was a skill he had that i admired to call you out on bullshit but also you would you would also find it funny and laugh along with it it was, it was a it's a it was what made him a great host i think uh of, of a show yeah of, of many shows, uh, you should go, my favorite thing, I'll just say, um, again, because a lot of people here remember, maybe never even saw stuff with him, you can go check out uh, the trip I did with him to Liverpool, which I really loved. Uh, and uh, if you if, if you want to post stuff in the comments, that'd be a nice thing, too. Like I said, we usually do a, a stream uh, and, and have a little something. But, yeah, if you've got a favorite thing, I'd love to see it in the comments. It's a nice way to remember his legacy here on the site. I've been playing. Is that a good transition? <laughs> No, but it's we, got, we did it already, so we're there. Yeah. We're just, just do it. Uh, so what have I been playing? We talked a lot about The Last of Us Two, and that is a video game that I have now uh, started playing. Just kind of picked it up. I know okay. the two of you have talked about it quite a bit, and um, <clears throat> I'm really enjoying it. I, I think uh, I don't know how far in I am. Uh, I'm, I'm out there doing my business, 
and uh, I'm, I'm more than a few hours. Um, you know, uh, it's not bothering me or, or kind of um, uh, bringing me uh, to a crippling state as much as I thought it might uh, from kind of hearing some of the descriptions of the, of the mood of it. Uh, and I think by playing it on normal, I think that game is, I feel, uh, fair to forgiving on normal. So I, I think it is. It is. It is going for the the checkpoints for the encounters. I think are very well done. I think the um, the <laughs> mechanically, I, I, a lot of it has been said already, and everybody dances around spoilers. So I'm not going to spend too much time here. I don't think I'm early enough on where I probably couldn't spoil too much anyway. But uh, the thing that I changed, I had trouble with was they go back and forth sometimes to mashing like the square button to holding the square button for certain actions. Yes, they do. Uh, like oh, you have to hold it to open a door, but you have to mash it to get away from a, a zombie or. Or, or something like that, to the point where I just went in eventually and I just changed everything to hold it because um, I, I, at some point it was like blinking on the screen and I wasn't sure if I should mash it or hold it and felt that uh, going back and forth was not a great decision on their part. Like um, I Maybe I would have gotten used to it eventually, but when you get grabbed by a zombie, you don't want to be doing the wrong thing, right? If it's a, if it's a hold, <laughs> you don't want to be holding if it's a push. Uh, the other thing I will say, this is not mechanically, and please, I'm not going to go into any spoilers here, but there is one goofy thing. The game is so takes itself so seriously and uh, and takes its canon very seriously and takes everything about the world so seriously, except for one weird part uh, that I found. And so it makes these little things stand out to me. And maybe this is why some of it uh, is a little goofier than others. But like um, Ellie can, uh, there's the the clickers, the ones that have the the whole fungus face. They were in the first game, uh, and they have no eyes, and but they can rip out your throat, right, with their teeth. They're, it's a bad they, chomping. They feel for your throat, I would imagine. Well, they have the echolocation, whatever they do. I don't know. But, sure. Uh, but They're not uh, whales. Are they whales? <laughs> well, they say they use echolocation. That's the whole clicker thing. Oh. Um, and so, but she, when she goes to go stealth kill those guys, immediately puts her hand over their mouth, like, uh, over those teeth that have, and, and then kind of like cuts their throat. And it's just like, what are you doing? Don't put your hand near that. That's, that's the bad. But that's, that's the, the thing. She, ca she can, because she's not, you're going to lose a remember? finger. What are you doing? Yeah, there is no that part. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, just to piggyback on your, your, your feelings there, Vinny, where, oh my God, gloves. Where, where, why is no one wearing gloves? <laughs> wear gloves. Wear, wear gloves. Wear gloves. This fucking sharp ass, sharp objects everywhere. Bloody, disgusting fungus and blood all over the place. <laughs> no one's wearing gloves in this guy. It's a game. lot. It's a lot. It, the, the game is very wet. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff is, that is. It, it's, everything it's, is, is infected yeah, and moldy yeah, and rusted yeah. and you're awful. Right. And you're <laughs> lollygagging around. What is the. Like, I'm sorry. I, I maybe, <laughs> maybe this is how, like, Jerry Seinfeld would talk about the last of <laughs> Oh, us. it is. But it's like. I don't understand. How do you? How's that not in your backpack? I don't, everybody, your backpack? everybody should have a pair of those uh, uh, either mechanics gloves, the ones that have like the knuckles that are p padded, so you're not bruising your knuckles, moving everything away, or just a nice pair of leather gloves because uh, I feel like there's a lot of sharp objects. There's a lot of tetanus in this world. Everybody's so much wearing. Tetanus. Uh, everybody has a chance what? to uh, not only have get infected, noticed? but yes, yes. Have you also noticed? So that's again, these are pet peeves. I put that out on Twitter the other day, and people were straight up like, "Hey, you're not considering how fast gloves probably were the first thing to go in this world." And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like gardening gloves and fucking like tool shed gloves and but, shit. Uh, but also, like, but, uh, but also, like those probably let those last for a while. But also, we're, I'm, I'm constructing a med kit, or like I'm putting together, I'm putting together some like smoke bombs yes. in my backpack. I can find up some cloth and put together yeah. some gloves. It's okay. I just, I, we'll I figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> crickets together and all of a like, sudden yes. very pipe okay it's like, no. one other thing like, that all, all the stuff oh, sorry, sorry. I to say, but like yes all this you're right 100 percent. all the gloves that were in store shelves i'm sure were <laughs> gone within days of the infection starting but at the same time you tell me again they're they're in a play like the, the game starts out with with ellie in a place where there are a lot of other survivors <laughs> around you telling me no one there knows how to sew no one, no they, one they, at all. They, Not one. They're doing a great job in that house. Uh, the the one other thing that is again, I, please don't say this is a spoiler. It can't be, but you can upgrade your weapons in the game, and and I'm far enough along where I've gotten a couple of upgrades 
uh, for the things. And, you know, it's very much she hits a workbench and uh, she start, you spend some of your scrap and it look, you know, it has the feel that she's going in there with these tools that are on a workbench and kind of like filing out uh, 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 the barrel of a gun to make it stronger or putting a new grip on a gun. And I finally got an upgrade for uh, a scope on a gun and she just puts her backpack down and takes a fully uh, manufactured scope out of her backpack and just puts, it on, the, puts it on the gun. It's just like, what, you just been holding out of that one, huh? It's, it's, now it's a t- if I only had a screwdriver to attach this to the gun, I would have done it ages ago. It was just a weird moment where she's just like, I was very curious to see, oh, is she going to have like two tin cans with a Coke bottle between them or something? Nope. No, it's just a, a scope that is, comes out. It is cool that the pistol silencer is basically just like an old school like plastic Coke right. bottle. Right. It, it, it's the, it's the, you know? it's the, uh, the kind of uh, put together on the fly thing. Anyway, I thought that was very funny. Uh, One more thing. Yeah. One more thing. Yeah. If we're just doing like just riffing, you are last just riffing. of us. Yeah. Um, brick and bottles, right? Yeah. Like that, the currency in that game is brick and bottles. And it's uh-huh. like, mm-hmm. oh, those are two very different objects. Like, yeah, a bottle. You carry a bottle in your back, a glass bottle in your backpack, and it's like, all right, uh-huh. okay, that's not a problem. You're carrying a, a a freaking brick, a heavy ass like 15 pound brick. Yeah, yeah. This is that's why you carry. That's why you can only carry one. But you should be able to carry. How about this? Yeah, three bottles, one brick. But then what if the brick breaks the bottle? No, no, no not to, never, never together. Never <laughs> together. I what say, a, you gotta you gotta have a separate like bottle section for your backpack but that, because just about everything else she's carrying would break that shit. Yeah, and, and also also you, yeah. do you need like that thing they give you at the wine store when you buy multiple so they don't cling together, like that little cardboard divider so your bottles aren't uh, <laughs> clanging and, in the backpack. And Jackson on their way out, don't forget your wine holder. <laughs> yeah. your you're gonna you're gonna want a couple of don't forget your brick holder as well. Um, well, I'm thrilled that we got our tight five in about Last of Us Two today. I am enjoying that it game a lot. Uh, I think, uh, again, I think I'm far enough in to uh, have uh, gotten through a lot of the mechanics uh, out of the initial mechanics. I don't know how many new ones there will be, but I hope I hope there's some new ones. Learning new skills and stuff like that. But um, in, enjoying it, enjoying it a lot. Uh, I think there's still a spoiler cast as soon as more people get through it on the on the our side on the giant bomb stuff there is uh, supposed to be a spoiler cast uh spoilers i like that game uh, i've also been playing more uh hard space ship breaker excuse me there's a um a unfinished up on the site you can go check that out matt Roy and i got together tore down a ship enjoy it um i would like to see some uh, uh competitive hard space ship breaking uh and you know i want to see people get in there and and uh, do it. Somebody uh, had messaged me and uh, kind of goofing around and said, maybe, maybe there's like, you know, a world where you're a, a caster talking about how you're tearing people, two different people are tearing the ship apart. And I can see that. I can see that happening. There's a lot of um, uh, uh, the race to tear those ships apart is could be fun. But that's uh, unfinished. That is, or sorry, that it's early access on Steam, Hard Space Shipbreaker. That's about it. Most of my time then going back into Last of Us uh, when I kind of sit down and um, get some get some free hours. And that's probably leading to some of my, like, I need these hours at night because I want to get in there and I want to see where this is going. That game has a, a real page turner vibe to it where you it, it, mm-hmm. it keeps rolling you into the next event, next event, next event. Um, and uh, that's, you know. That's a fun game. It's hard to put down sometimes where you're like, I want to see what happens next. Is this a good place to stop? So I'm very happy the checkpointing is good there. Alex, been playing anything? Yes. Yeah. If, so I, I haven't done much Last of Us in the last week because, uh, and I, this is literally all I can say about it, but uh, Ghost of Tsushima, the, the, the new samurai game from Sucker Punch, review code is out there. Hashtag, it's out there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because apparently the embargo that went up is literally just that you can tell everyone you have an embargo, which okay. is my least favorite kind of embargo. But uh, so I've been playing a bunch of that and I won't be able to talk about that probably for at least another week or two. Um, but I have been playing a lot of it and that's all I'll say. Um, <laughs> I did play one other thing, uh, okay. which was one of the demos that were put up on Steam a couple of weeks ago when they were doing that whole big demo push. Uh, someone mentioned this game to me, and I, I decided to check it out. It's called Rhythm Doctor. Ooh, um, okay. I think it, is, that, yeah. it is a rhythm-based uh, game where you are, I, I guess, some kind of doctor who is helping these various patients who have uh, rhythm-related uh, sicknesses, illness, <laughs> illness yes. 
Uh, and so it's only at, uh, like three or four like patient levels that you can you can play in the demo, but they're pretty distinct from one another. Uh, what like the first one you play, it's literally just making sure you're hitting the the seven on the beat like that's you it's like a defibrillator and it's like that that's how the beat sort of shows up is on that on that line and when mm -hmm. you hit it at the right time you are healing the patient when uh -huh. you hit it at the wrong time you are making things worse uh, -huh. uh and so initially it seems very straightforward but then they start changing up which beats you're hitting on and then at a certain point the game just starts really fucking with you by like say uh, completely distorting the screen in front of you, having the actual game window go into windowed mode and then start jumping around your screen, like that's, that kind of shit while you're playing. Shouldn't do that while you're uh, while you're in the midst of any kind of operation. Mm. Yeah, I think that's uh, supposed to be the sickness itself, sort of, you know, oh, manifesting itself okay. while you're trying to do the work. Um, it's challenging. Those those levels in particular are pretty challenging, um, but it's neat. Like the the music is distinctive. Like there is an interesting vibe to it. Like I said, there's not a lot of content in that demo, and I actually don't know if any of those demos are still up or not. I, I don't know how long they were supposed to be up on Steam, but uh, if you have the opportunity to check that one out, I would say do so. It's pretty cool. Rhythm Doctor. Yes. And it's new. Uh, the demo. Yeah, I, I don't think the game itself is out yet. Just the, okay. the demo was up on Steam. Uh, what was the one? What's the one though for the Wii? The like tra no, trauma center. Trauma, was it? trauma tra center. Yeah. Was it trauma center? Um, where you it was yeah. using? Yeah. Okay. Is that what you're looking on your shelf for the game? Yeah, trauma <laughs> center. Second opinion is on my shelf right there. So okay. That's the one. I like that game. Um, not yeah. a, not necessarily a rhythm game, but um, no, uh, that was a. But a, but like a good a good attempt at sort of making the kind of like medical stuff fun in a game <laughs> yes. as opposed to some of the other games that have tried to do like doctor simulation stuff that are either completely incomprehensible or just bad i uh i played operation recently or we have operation in the house that game um the most realistic doctor the, game. the most realistic doctor game uh uh charlie horse and uh, uh mm -hmm. bread basket and they added uh they added one um brain freeze they added brain freeze where you have ice cream in your head and um I feel like does anybody actually play that game, or do you just get it out and try to get the stuff out of the body? Like nobody really plays with the cards and like that gets money for doing the thing, right? You just you take it out and you just try to get everything out without hitting a buzzer, right? I think I, think I did in like yeah. the eighties when I was a kid. <laughs> did you? But I could. I would probably say more often than not, yeah. I just I just messed around with the board. Like it's the same way. I never really played Fireball Island. I just like launching <laughs> the marble down the fucking the track right. on that shit. Or cat or, like, trap. Mouse or trap. Mouse trap. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Mouse trap. Yeah. We just got my kid mouse trap, and it's like, or someone <laughs> bought it for him for his birthday, and I, I'm like, I'm like, oh, there's dice in here. <laughs> <laughs> also, yeah. also a lot doing? of pieces of cheese. Like, um, uh, so yeah, there's a, there's also something interesting which I think I never realized. The rubber band that is at the ankle, I think it's a sprained ankle, whatever they call it. I'm sure there's mm -hmm. some pun. Um, you're supposed to start. I always played getting the rubber band out of him, but you're actually supposed to start with just one half of it connected to one pin and connected to the other pin. Uh, so says the instructions, and I never knew that. Oh, it's like you're repairing a tendon. Yeah, kind of like that, um, uh, and they just don't hit the sides. Uh, also, I think we might have lost a spare rib somewhere, which is kind of a bummer. I feel like that game is, uh, uh, if I had a 3D printer, you could just print all, all that stuff. Also, I feel like they have toned down the alarm in the version I have. I feel like that thing used to buzz so much more loudly. Uh, maybe I got to go in there and, and mod that thing and uh, get in there and probably hook a car battery up to it. So, um, and so it really starts going. Uh, back, I don't know if you've noticed this, but some of those old What's games, up? some of those old games like Connect Four, uh, Hungry Hungry Hippos, those old, those they old. They feel cheaper now, right? They are made of saying? garbage now. Yeah. Holy cow. They are. I've talked about the Hungry Hungry Hippos before and the marbles are actually plastic and yeah. hollow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But man, all that stuff is. It's disappointing. I mean, listen, they're like five dollars, so I understand that they are priced to move. But yeah, I mean, this shouldn't be surprising. Like they've no. been selling the same thing for f what fifty years, 30, <laughs> 30 to fifty years, give or take. And like, you, if you didn't think they were going to figure out a cheaper way to assemble this thing with less, you know, materials mm. and less, you know, work, uh, you'd be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like it, it, simply uh, put. Like I have Battleship, it feels like garbage. Uh Hungry Hungry Hippos, garbage. Connect four, garbage. Um Did you guys ever play uh the computer battleship, the one where you actually pro can program it? Oh no, that sounds cool. Yeah, that was no, cool. No, I never did. Yeah, I never one, had that. That one was cool. 
Yeah, what's up? I got Mark two Lord? new I got two new things in the house for kids toys cuz I'm a kid now and I play with kids toys. Uh it's called Zane uh Marble Zane, Zany Marble. I mm-hmm. it okay. was this Okay. It is this thing where uh you basically it's a Rube Goldbergian thing where you start a marble on one section of this plastic board and then through like a row of levers and knobs <laughs> You move the marble all through this obstacle course to the end. That sounds fun. And the end is like, and the end is like a slammer with a bell. I I played it growing up and had completely forgotten about it until I saw, I don't know, maybe someone on Instagram playing with it or something like that. And uh, I picked one up, but they're like seventeen dollars, and it's super super. Do you know what I'm talking about? I it's don't. Called, I don't. Man, it's called like Marble Zany Marble Face or something like that. <laughs> Zany Marble Face, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, it's kind of like a marble run, except you are in control of the marble's path. And then if it drops off, it falls into a little catcher and you got to start over. Hmm. Uh, they're they're awesome. Also, um, Mastermind, you know what Mastermind is? I remember Mastermind. Type? Yeah, I remember that game. Oh, I yeah. Sucked at it. Is that not like a Simon's, oh, yeah. Simon game? No. That's okay. electronic. This is analog as you can get. There's yep. a code maker and a code breaker. Oh, the boy. code maker picks a uh, a, a four uh, color coded like pattern. Okay. With, uh, up to, I think there's six colors you can choose from, and you can do any combination you want. They choose that. Then you have ten guesses as the code breaker to guess what their code is. Okay. So you basically just like put pegs in holes as you walk along this sort of path. And the code maker after each submission has to basically score your guess. So a red peg means that one of the colors is in the right spot. A white peg means you're using the right color, but it's in the wrong spot. So okay. you use the, the you know deduction trial and error and you figure out within 10 guesses if uh, you know, you try and figure out what they're doing, but it's so much fun, and we're we're all about it. We've been rocking it every night. It's so much fun. Every night, every night, man. It's a Are great you, game. It's, and you said you, uh, you said well, we're just gonna we're gonna sit here for a little bit. We're gonna sit on this for a little it. bit. Let's okay, we're, the, the yeah. Sorry, sorry, Alex. Here we go. Um, no, it's uh, fine. So you said that you played Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters on the advanced mode, and you said it was too easy. I am. It is. It's not. How, you did the. You, mean, you did the. You did the gems in order. Yeah. So okay. So someone did call me out on that on okay. Twitter. I'm crossing my arms right, here because I think I might have been overlooking one rule that we would never had played with. Uh, I will say this: I love uh, ghost fighting treasure hunters, but mm-hmm. I'm just gonna say, and and I did have this problem with Ticket to Ride as well. I just want to say that maybe <laughs> the rules are not perfectly laid out. You need to read more guides. Okay. Well, like that. Come on. What are we doing here? Um, also, right. real quick, it's called it's called Zany Mar. It's called Screwball Marble. I'm sorry. Screwball Scramble is the marble game I was just talking about. Okay. Screwball Thank Scramble. Okay. Loads in the chat. What, um, so what's the story? What did you What did you forget? So, because we just when, we've been we've been playing a bunch of it too. So and I just we just started back up on the, we did the normal mode and then we did advanced <laughs> mode again and I was like we got creamed. Uh, well, we almost we almost like, did it. I was like back <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, we gotta beat the back of ours. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you overlook? Okay, so when a room is haunted, when a room is haunted, you we play that you can pass through the room, but you can't grab a gem out of it. I think like, you think you could like do that. You, you can pass through a room if you're not holding a gem. Yes, if it's haunted. You, yeah, right. If it's haunted, it's a no gem room. Yeah. And if and if there is a gem in the room, you two players to. have to kill the haunted for you to. If you're holding the gem, exercise the room. For How you do you kill a ghost? Uh, you roll the oh dice. My God, you roll two battle dice. Come on. Yeah. What? No, yeah. that's not how ghosts work. Yeah, uh, yeah. In this game, it does. Well, you have to get a haunting thing on the dice. Wait. So yeah, if you only if you have a gem, are you stuck in the room with the haunted? Right. Yeah, that's, that's right. It. I think that's right. And but you you did the gems in order. You did in the uh, you did the reshuffle deck, uh, the all yeah. the reshuffle cards, and the closed Here's, door and the locked door cards. Yeah, of course. Come on. All right. All right. So, all right. So all right. what I'm also curious about is if you okay, so you're halfway through a deck, yeah. you pull the three cards and shuffle deck. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Do you do one card, two card, three cards? Those cards stay, and then you shuffle everything else. Or no. Do you do one. So so those three cards that you just drew are then eligible for the shuffle oh yeah yeah, yeah. the whole deck gets reshuffled okay 
yeah. it changes yeah. things a little bit, but not yeah. that much. Um, oh, it's just, that's it. That's the that's the secret. Um, yeah, no, those have to go back in because the whole I think the whole the whole risk is, oh, now those rooms that just got more ghosts in it are eligible to get more ghosts immediately. You know, like right, and you're you're essentially doubling down where it's yeah. like you could have like a one two punch where you get you know yeah anyway just I love that game but uh, it's fun it's we, a lot of did, fun we did get rocked the last time we played it in like a we we had like maybe two gems out the door and, and we lost <laughs> it's so. fun it's a lot but, of fun but you know you 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 basically the the strategy of that game is you keep the players on the board as long as you can because you need people to be able to fight ghosts at all times mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know and and if it's a one two or three you pick it up. And you go by, we go by threes. One, two, or three, you pick it up, we go by so threes. So, like, you have to oh, pick oh, out the gems in the order of the numbers, right? Yeah. So, I'm only picking up the gems that say one, two, and three first. Yeah. If we're playing with three players, yeah. Right. Oh, yes, of course, yes. Um, of course, of course, on, of course. that's just, that's one-on-one. On one. Uh, there's one more while we're here on the board games, because I, I think there's maybe not too much else to talk video game while we're on the board game <laughs> stuff here. Um, there's another game that was speaking of marble stuff. I think it's called magic labyrinth or, or labyrinth or something where it's, uh, my kids really like it. There's a marble that is held by a magnet, uh, uh, underneath the board and there's a labyrinth you build. Did you ever seen this Jeff? It's, it's really fun yes. and you kind of have to move your way along. And if you hit a secret wall, the marble will fall off and go into the thing. I've, it's something labyrinth, uh, which is awesome. This, is, this is on like the end cap of every like zany brainy store. You know, we're like, you're like, you want your you want your four year old to be a genius. You know, let them play this board game. But yeah, uh, I've seen this for sure. Jeff, what other uh, what other video games you, you got? Anything? I am also playing uh, Ghosts of Tsushima. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which you cannot uh, talk about that yet. I'm just gonna take a beat. Uh -huh. And I'm also playing another game that I'm not I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say I'm playing. <laughs> that's a great that's a Don't great you bit. just love this? This is a Isn't great this bit. Great content. Uh, I've been well, playing uh, I've been playing Wingspan. It's another board game. I finally I finally bought that and uh while well, you find out about your embargo stuff. And um we had another board game come into the house which was um a Kickstarter I had done, uh, Project Elite. Which is a really fun game. I thought maybe uh, it would be too advanced for my son, but it's like kind of aliens the game, where but it has a real time aspect. So you have this two minute window where everybody's just rolling dice, trying to fight off hordes of of enemies, uh, and we uh, that was a lot of fun. But we got um, we kind of got creamed, <laughs> overrun by hordes of enemies in that one. Uh, a lot of fun, a lot of miniatures. Don't know if I'm gonna paint all those, but. Um, yeah, and Wingspan was a lot of fun too. I kind of held off uh, for a while, and then um, now that every minute is something to do in the in the mornings here, uh, we need a lot of stuff to do. Uh, from, yes, Jeff, is that enough time? Yeah, I mean, this is, is a good stretch. I it doesn't say I can. <laughs> so that usually okay. means you can, right? I can't say that for sure. What kind of a world are we in right now where this is like, I feel like it, it wasn't always like this where it wasn't always like you couldn't, right? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Before. I don't know, bud. What do you want? What do you want to do? You want to, I'm going to yeah, let you I'm, make I'm the I'm playing calls. Paper Mario. That's what I'm doing. I'm playing Paper Mario. Oh, that's fun. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The stream's going to get shut huh. off. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what a, great 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 energy good vibe love it uh. love it um i'm still waiting for my copy of terraforming mars I, it was on uh it was on a back order i'm still waiting for that alex you have anything else you want to you playing any board games alex no. no i played some scrabble the other night that's that's what i got that's so, that's the only board game i think i actually own at this point well i have like a copy of Catan, but i don't have enough people to play that here uh i just play it online good they probably have that in a tabletop simulator or i'm sure there's a digital oh. version of Catan somewhere oh there is <laughs> yeah. and let me assure you that it's not actually that fun to play at least the the switch version it's hard enough to find like a good game uh to to want to keep trying and playing against the uh the mobile players is also just an <laughs> exercise and boy it's taking forever to connect a match so i tend to just not bother uh i uh I I'm kind of hoping to get through. I'm really, like I said, I'm really enjoying The Last of Us 2, but I'm kind of, I feel like I had to put Final Fantasy 7 on hold. I just don't have that much time to play games. So uh, I'm kind of hoping we get another little break here in games. So, because my, I do have a backlog now accruing. Is there anything else big coming out soon? We're in a, we're in a kind of a, 
weirdish time of game releases, especially with the new yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'm like, I, I do I'm feel stuff like is coming out. Yeah, pe- yeah, peppered in here and yeah. there, but it's you know, it, it feels like a regular kind of summer, right? I do feel like August is looking more sparse than usual. Um, like we got a couple of things in July. We got Tsushima, the Deadly Premonition 2 is coming mm-hmm. out in like a week. <laughs> um, but like. I feel like at least oh, some, Madden is still coming. We know that. But I feel like some of the the August, early September stuff that we were thinking was going to hit is maybe not necessarily going to hit. So I don't know. Uh, I will say this. I mean, I know this is the thing no one ever wants to talk about, but like I, I have not heard anything about hockey. Like I haven't heard. I haven't <laughs> they seen haven't a press- said a word. They haven't, they said, haven't a said, word. said a thing. This game, I mean, it usually comes out two months from now. And I want to say there might not be one at this point just because of the lack of information. Like, I, I don't know. I haven't really searched the term NHL 21 just yet, but. Because you don't want to know what, 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 what awaits you there. The, 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 the gaping maw, the, you know, the, the sucking void where hockey would normally be is just, you know, it's just empty now. It's just uh, hockey is gone. It's, it's just an empty ice rink. I mean, hopefully not for long. Uh, The only information I see was that they will release it. Wow. Okay. That's that's very reassuring. Good. You uh, sure you can talk about that? Some mascot is going to be on the cover. What's up? (laughs) You sure you can talk about that? That it might be released? Don't don't do that to me. (laughs) Is it it gritty? Is it gritty? (laughs) I, who else could it be, right? Yeah. What? What? Name another mm. hockey mascot, right? Other I, than the devil for the devils. I mean, I, I, I can. I can name a bunch, but uh, <laughs> that's just because I have an unhealthy. See, you can't. Hockey. No one can. No one can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, a saber. Uh, nope. Uh, it's not just like a knife going around in in, in Buffalo. An islander. I know Bailey. Bailey is the king's one. Uh, Bailey's like a white tiger, right? Chance is like the snake in Vegas. Okay. I think the Buffalo one is a Buffalo, if I'm it's not mistaken. It, 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 that would be the only reasonable animal yeah, choice there. It, there's a difference between knowing the name and knowing what the thing is, right? Like, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, Look that's why that's why everyone, that's why Gritty stands out to everyone, yeah. because he's just nonsense. He's just right. a fucking, he's like a, a, he's like the Muppet that nobody wanted. You know, the Sesame Street character that they just fucking, they kicked out because he was too much of a dirtbag. Yeah, he's just a, a Muppet malfunction. Do you yeah. know, uh, do you, uh, do you know, like the Muppets, speaking of Muppets, it, the, um, it, we tried to go watch the old Muppet show, can't find it anywhere. How in 2020? Yeah, it's nowhere. Much like you can't do that on television, is it just in some pit somewhere? Where is it? Is it like a... Uh, my guess is that the licensing involved with all the celebrities and musical performances oh. makes putting that shit out in a meaningful. So there are some of the seasons are on DVD, but they're out of print, I think. And uh, two of them never made it out. I've looked this stuff up, believe me. Yeah. And I don't know why, but I did. And it's, I think that a lot of those old variety shows, it's harder to put that stuff out in a meaningful context without get securing the rights to make sure that like, those performances can be broadcast again. Interesting. Okay, that makes yeah. a little more sense because they, uh, one of them, and it's like split, like uh, the HBO Time Warner stuff has Sesame Street, uh, and then, which, you know, is Henson, and then Disney, I think, has the newer Muppet stuff and then the Muppet movie and stuff on it. But uh, yeah. finding the old Muppet show, because we were describing it to the kids, and we're like, I'm like, oh, we should take a look at it. And we looked at the new Muppet show where they do like a behind the scenes documentary of making the uh, Muppet. That's show. not good. That show's not good. And I was like, this is, A, this is like, you know, I feel like the Muppets had a, maybe I'm misremembering, but I feel like the Muppets kind of walked the line that some really good Pixar films do that is like, oh, kids can engage with this and parents find some of the stuff funny. Totally. And and the new Muppet stuff was like, this is like kind of above where my eight-year-old and five-year-old are with like basically Kermit and Piggy relationship drama and not being able to be in the same room together. And on, it was like focusing on that. And they're just like, what's going on here? Why, why are they fighting? Uh, yeah, that's the path they started going down with the Muppets movie they made in 2012, 13, whenever that first reboot one? movie was. Yeah, the Jason yeah. Siegel one. That's the the route they started going down. And uh, I think that in the one movie, I was kind of willing to put up with it. But it feels like that's all they know how to do Muppet stuff now, which <sighs> is distressing. Uh, I don't think I ever saw that movie. Um, is it good? The the the, fir- the Jason Segel one is what yeah the it? Jason Segel one the first one is is a decent enough movie the okay. second one is a trash fire. <laughs> okay. Um, 
Are we, or can we just make this a real TV show segment right yeah, now? Yeah, go sure. for it. We're go already here. It. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, we, uh, we got a little more time until the first break. Did we talk about Holy Moly? I don't think so. I don't know what that is. Okay, so my kid somehow found this show called Holy Moly, mm -hmm. and it's basically like extreme miniature golf. Okay. Where, okay. Where it's like, hey, let's make American Gladiators and miniature golf a oh, thing. Oh, man. And Rob Riggle is one of the commentators. Oh, wow, it's, okay. It's kind of funny. And he was obsessed with it then the other day he saw a um an advertisement for floor is lava yeah we're watching that I that's a, that that's show. uh we're watching some of that that's at, that's at, that's that at, that's happening that's happening here floor is lava is definitely something i've caught on the tv with the kids i watched right. not much of it i watched maybe uh a little bit Same, the, pe the right? pizza parlor He's one is the one i saw Oh, I, okay. We started from the beginning. I don't think we're there yet. Uh, aside from like, you know, maybe some of these people are terrible. Um, the show, <laughs> like the lengths that they go with this show and the things that they do on the show, I do find very funny. For example, so basically the show is an obstacle course show uh. where, uh, you know, you can't touch the ground because it's a red pool and you lose in <laughs> three, three player teams and they have to get from one end to the other. And there's, my, there's minor puzzle solving and it's just it's it's fun right but what the the funniest thing about this show and like also production value is pretty amazing like they they <laughs> do some really intricate and well-designed rooms for these things i well, just find well, all that to be like i think super that's fascinating where that's it's like part of the setup right where it's like yeah. these are these are kind of real world environments not like an american gladiators course or sure uh, it's, it's like, like a like living that. room yeah or, yeah you know. right right so I love the fact that if a team member falls into the lava, the show does not cut to them again, and they basically imply that they have died. Yes, they never come out They're of the like, lava. Yeah, They don't come out of the lava. Yeah. And all of the teammates sort of scream and yelp in their direction as yeah. if they will never see them again, and they yeah. just witness their death, so which I just find amazing. Uh, they also add a lot of, like, little ember effects where like <laughs> to almost imply that this is real life lava mm -hmm. <laughs> so 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 my kids uh, i talked to my kids about that as as kids kind of like are understanding oh. video editing and we're talking we did like some iMovie stuff on the ipad making making movies to try and understand how you can you can you can maybe adjust reality in ways that aren't and my son was like so are they uh, there's a, do they have like a scuba tank <laughs> under the the wa under the lava, or they just have to, or they have to hold their breath the whole time until the episode's over, uh, until they get out? And I was like, listen, I don't really actually know. That's I, good question. I, I, he's like, do they pause the whole thing and everybody just waits there while they get out? And I was like, these are great questions. I, I don't really know. I, I say go all the way with it. If you're really going to go this route, like make every single person who falls into lava like the end of Terminator 2 with the <laughs> Just, fucking T-1000 yeah. thrashing around and fucking, oh. you know, going through the death throes and all that shit. Like, fine. We're already in the darkest future. <laughs> Fuck it. Just, <laughs> Just make everyone who dies on the fucking, the floor is lava, look like they are actually sinking into lava. So uh, that would be, I, I, I'll take that one step further and just make the whole thing actually lava so that the, as soon as the contestants walk into the first platform, they just die from the ambient heat in the room and just, oh, right. just, yeah. just burst into flames. The fumes like, alone here, knock them over. <laughs> here come our first contestants. Oh, they just ignited because actually the air in here is 8,000 degrees. I mean, I, I, I kind of like play this game with my kid where, where he's like, Dad, you have to see the show. Floor is lava. And I'm like, is that real lava? Why is everything not on fire? And he's just like, no, it's not lava, Dad. It can't. Be. I'm like, okay, we're not. We're, we're doing all right. Uh, yeah, you got a smart cookie there. They, uh, I'm just picturing like a producer screaming at one of the contestants, mm -hmm. like, okay, don't, don't come out of the water now. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> just stay under, hold your breath. Oh, it's, it's amazing. So it's very much, I have a reaction to that. Like, um, like I do, and this is funny coming off of talking about last of us too. Uh, but it, sometimes it's hard for me to watch when somebody misses that jump and just smashes their chest or something up against the rim yeah. of a chair where you're like, Ooh, yeah. I don't know if that chair, that chair's not foam. That was just a full on. You just, or it, everything's wet. Cause, uh, uh, spoilers, the lava is actually some kind of liquid. It's some kind of water. It's just red water. So, <laughs> so everything is, everything is just slippery and wet. So people will try to do this running leap and just slip and just oh. crash their face or something against something and to just <laughs> sink into the lava. And I'm sitting there being like, I don't think. 
This is this is this 2020s Looney Tunes? Is this like should are we gonna look back at this and be like, why? No, I... Looney Tunes is 2020s Looney Tunes because they're making more Looney Tunes cartoons right now for HBO Max. Oh, and okay. And Beavis and coming back. Also, um, no protective gear whatsoever. No, no, it's just it's just it's just it's just, just full on, just hitting like, hitting stuff. Yeah, and and free balling. Yeah. I am blown away. Like there are many sharp. Cor- I, I don't know. Maybe they maybe they, maybe, maybe they're wearing foam. cups. Maybe that maybe there are cups or something. Maybe they have some kind of. I don't know. It just definitely point, seems like. Do I, you mean to tell me this mm-hmm. like physical game show that is based on an age old children's game and is just <laughs> another obstacle course show in a long line of dumb obstacle course show might not have the best safety regulations? I it, you know I would assume they have to do so or, yeah. or a lot of waivers are signed. I don't know. Yes. Uh, I, I, waivers yes. were definitely signed. Signed, but the, whether or not they actually are going through rigorous safety precautions, I yeah. don't know. And you can also sue them even if you sign a waiver. <laughs> <laughs> and someone uh, almost assuredly will. And uh, man, I uh huh. It's a it's it's a while. I that was the first thing that took me. I was like, oh wow, not one helmet. At all. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was watching it first and was like, oh, a lot of this stuff looks like it's foam. Okay. They they yeah. put like a lot of the stuff is not real. And then we just saw somebody wipe out on like a steel <laughs> chair. It was like, <laughs> ah. And like, you know, it's uh, as somebody who walks around uh, and has problems already with the kids in, in that kind of. Um, uh, I've said this before. What's that? What's the name of that movie where uh, you you envision something horrible happening and then it happens? You have the premonition of it happening and then it happens and everybody dies. Deadly, uh, uh, final destination. Final yeah, destination. as somebody who walks around and looks at everything in a final destination way, anyway, uh, out in the environment, like watching this, being like, oh gosh, don't. And you know, and of course, we uh, the next day, uh, yesterday morning, I think, in fact, we did our own floor is lava, where we were just hopping from couch to couch, and you know, uh, and you doing whatever. All your furniture. <laughs> <laughs> My furniture is destroyed anyway. My wife and I were like, should we? At some point, we should like, should we get a new couch? Or then we just look over, and the kids are just literally um, standing on the pillows, uh, rubbing it across the kitchen floor of the the house, uh, being like, what's the point? Why would we do that? Why would we get a new couch? This is a uh, um, this the, everything in here is destroyed anyway. Oh, yes. Anyway, it's, it's funny. Um, you all right, Alex? I, yeah, th- I no, thought I heard I, you uh, start hearing something. Yeah, my upstairs neighbor's practicing his DJ set again. I don't know if it's uh, coming through the no. mic. No, probably not. It's, no. it's, it's just faint enough that I bet it's not on the mic. But uh, there is some good uh, oh, happening nice. up there. It's time for you to get the drums out. Maybe you should. Uh, we'll take it during the break. We'll you just play some drums. The best part is that he doesn't just practice his set. He bounces up and down on the floor while he's doing it. Like he's at this, the, you know, on the stage, like doing his DJ moves. Uh, so that's the part that I really tend to hear is the, uh, the, the bouncing. There's a lot of bouncing. He keeps bouncing. He won't stop bouncing. Please stop him from bouncing. I can't stop him from bouncing. But Damn I can't. It. But I can stop this part of the podcast, and uh, I think we'll okay. stop. I think we'll stop here, and we'll take a little break. Uh, uh, we'll take a, a few minutes here. I need to go get something to eat. I feel a little lightheaded, actually. Um, too much goofing. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break. Uh, five minutes or so. I'm gonna play the music. We'll be back in just a few moments. Here we go with that music. Hopefully, this works. <laughs> Hello, and we are back, ready for the news this week. Oh, man, I was feeling lightheaded, and I still am not feeling super not lightheaded. Uh, There's actually a decent amount (coughs) of news this week. Before we get Mm -hmm. to it, I briefly wanted to mention some of the heavier stuff we mentioned last week. Really sensitive stuff. Um, Doing it live sucks. Didn't want to do it live. If we left people confused about things, uh, that is like where things stand. That that's on us. I apologize. I don't want to. Never want to take on the role of being the arbiter of justice or truth or severity. Uh, but getting through that stuff was tough for us. Tough to communicate it, uh, and the order and flow of things may have gotten. Uh, may have not been the the, the the way that I would have done if we were sequencing it out. So. Never want to leave the audience to have to plug in pieces <laughs> or put pieces together. We get enough news wrong where super sensitive stuff and stuff that's hard for us um, is is not where I want to be or, or, or leave that. Right. So there's that. Uh, also, just kind of, kind of wrapping that stuff up or, or not wrapping it up because we are going to probably have more of this as time goes forward. Um, 
there was a stuff that we mentioned with uh, Matt Pasquale, who's been on our community stuff and done a lot of the endurance run stuff uh, about the emotional abuse uh, allegations from an ex-girlfriend. He's put out a statement, which goes into more detail, and you can go check that out. Um, and it seems like from reading what's publicly been out there from <laughs> both of them, they kind of want to put it behind them. I think that was the language used. And so I want to honor that as well. Okay. And to close that out, I will just say, <laughs> not to track this on, I want to make sure our community, uh, this is the point I wanted to make last week too, is a place where we are not judging what is what needs to be severe enough to be brought up or or not, or what is, if somebody brings something up and it's in our community, I would like to be able to address it and talk about it, hopefully in a mature way, hopefully in a way that doesn't leave wounds on the site. Uh, because <laughs> Giant Palm has a lot of stuff in its wake, and I don't want I don't want it anymore. Uh, all right. That being said, we're gonna we're gonna move on. If you have comments about it, feel free to email uh, the Beastcast if you want to get that out. Give the mods maybe some room this weekend to have a three day weekend and a break in in the comments at least on the site. Uh, but if you if you have thoughts about it, you can email uh, the the Beastcast Beastcast at GiantBomb dot com, and that's that'll get to us, and we will be able to read it. Now. We're going to space stuff out because there is more terrible news, <laughs> more <laughs> horrible shit in this industry. Sometimes, Alex and Jeff, I'm wondering, much like Andy McNamara has said he is done, I, what am I, oh man, sometimes I feel like, I don't know, what am I, I, this industry, what are we doing? It's not, here's the thing I keep coming back to, is that the volume of terrible shit that has been coming out over the last couple of weeks is exceedingly high, mm -hmm. but it's not just us. It's not just video games. It's, it's all over the place. You know, it's comics, it's wrestling. It's, it's all facets of, oh, of it's, entertainment, uh, and, and, all facets of industry, all facets of society. Like the, that these things are bubbling to the surface now all at once is definitely very overwhelming but at the same time, these these issues obviously didn't just exist all of a sudden. No, like no, of, of course yeah. not. Of course yeah. not. I, I've had this conversation with a bunch of people over the years. This isn't just a new thing. And it's, it's just one of those things of like, you know, people will say, you know, as I worked in, uh, um, I won't say I was deep in it, but, you know, in television and a little bit in the, in the movie stuff, not a ton. But, you know, that is in those industries. It, it is pretty much uh -huh. you, will, you will have these kind of issues in every industry. It's just this is the one I love. This is the industry that um, is is really hard to talk about, uh, and it's because we been do I've been doing this a long time, and you know it's uh, it's people that we have crossed paths with, and and you know people that we uh, are are friends with, and getting uh, are wrapped up in stuff, or have horrible allegations against them, or or just kind of the whole thing just becomes. I Man, I just need new problems. <laughs> just, uh, just new. That's that's my joke that you can't make also <laughs> yeah. um i don't mean to laugh know, I, about it it's just it's so oh, i know it's it's getting it's, it's getting it's getting hard it's hard for me i think i i absolutely do need some time off uh to take, to take a break from stuff it's just um i, I mean I'll, I'll be real like every day that this drags on and every day that we've been you know in this lockdown you know the that things have 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 been spiraling over the last you know few months i have at least had to gut check myself once and be like do you is this still what you want to be doing? Is this yeah. still where you want to be? Is this still the thing you want to be a part of? And that's not specific to Giant Bomb. It's more just like, is this is this a place I still feel good about being? You know, this industry, this line of work, this is just in general where we are. And there are days when I am have a difficult time reconciling that and and really being like, yes, I do think I need to still be here. I need to still be a part of this. Because the thing I've always said to myself over the years is that if I ever find myself in a place where I am just taking up space and I am not A, happy, and mm. B, don't feel like I am actually still meaningfully contributing anything to this industry, this this you know, this world, maybe it's time to go. And that is the thing that I have at times <laughs> yeah. thought to myself, like, what, what am I, what am I doing? Am I still, do I still belong here? Is it still even like morally justifiable to still be working mm. in this kind of stuff? And I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't have any hard answers about any of it, but no, you know, it, I think it's worth expressing that, you know, like <laughs> we have these doubts and we have these feelings and there are times, especially lately where it's, 
it's a lot more omnipresent and it's a lot more oppressive. It, it just feels like, you know, I, there's a, it feels like part of the job to be, you know, aware of all this stuff. And there, there are people yeah. in our, who follow our site have different levels of comfort with everything, you know, different levels of, Hey, I don't want to hear about this. I do want to hear it. this is super important for me to hear about. And like, I'd rather just hear about the jump in Mario, but like, you know, for us, it is, uh, there, I feel like there is uh, a responsibility to know what is going on and for to always, I feel to make sure the, the people who are most vulnerable within our community have the information they need to process stuff and, and to kind of yeah. move forward. And, and people who don't think things are a big deal, that's fine. I mean, I mean, maybe not fine, but like, uh, you know, you do what you got to do, but it, it's hard, you know, it, and so kind of compiling all, all the crap and having to sift through it and be like, man, it's hard to not be able to look away because there was a point in my life where you put the game in and you just played it. You didn't know any better. Right. And like, they feel like that and this job are not compatible. That that is uh, that is not a lifestyle. And I think as a responsible, I kind of feel like as somebody who's responsible wants to try and make some of this stuff better, it needs to be addressed. And that's painful and tough and, and hard. And yeah. hopefully uh, you, you move through it on the other side and it's messy and we're humans and we're going to make mistakes, especially here. I'm, uh, I, sometimes I don't feel human. Of, <laughs> and it's like, you know, I am not trained to do this. I am not, uh, you know, listen, I'm going to get real with you. I love producing video. The only reason I'm up here doing this was is, is because somebody has to be on the end of the microphone sometimes. Yeah. And like I really love being behind the scenes and making video and playing games with 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 these chuckleheads around on this site and like it's hard. Like none of us take pleasure from having to go through a lot of this stuff. I, I don't want to spend too much time and dwell on this, but like it's just something I think we're all feeling. Yeah. Sorry, Backlar, um, just kind of walking stepping over you. No, it's okay. I um you know, I think, like you said, it, it is, it is for me, the way I kind of, I'm not reconciled, but the way I kind of look at it is like, it is a human problem, right? Like it is a human being problem. And, um, you know, in our industry, it gets a lot of attention and it's, and that's the, that's the reality of it. Right. And for me, it's like, I, tr I choose to look at the positives of what that nets out. Right. Where it's like, just like you know many and again this is not exclusive to our world it is definitely a a sort of milestone though a sort of like a beacon if you will in terms of how uh sort of transparent it is and i think that uh, in the grand scheme of things is a help a helpful thing just in terms of you know when you look at like well, this stuff has to come out and it has to be recognized and it has to be out there for things to ever get better is, is, is what I kind of, it's a very, it's a, po like, it's a positive like, way. And I don't know, like the insurance industry maybe has, has yet to have its reckoning. Like, I don't know, like, you know, there's, there's all these other sort of facets of, of, of industry that seem to be untouched by stuff like this, but it is mm, everywhere. It is a it human is. problem. Untouched and is not the it, word. It's yeah. just that it's there it, at this point, it's just been obfuscated and has yes, not been, that's, been that's what I mean. brought into the light. Sure. Um, that's, yeah. But yeah, it's Look, a, there's some real rot to deal with and totally. you know, it's, it's exhausting and it's, 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 un, it's, it's miserable to have to sort through, but at the same time it has to happen because like it, this industry can't be like, it cannot be morally justified if it is not willing to deal with the the rotten culture at the center of it. The center of it, like it's just it can't. You can't. Like I don't know. Like I part of this is just making me never want to fucking touch another video game again. <laughs> I know. And I know no, that's no, really. probably yeah. not how yeah. it's going to go down. But like yeah. every time I think about booting up a console and just playing a game, it's like, is this escapism fucking worth it? Oh well, so it's funny. Like the it's the uh, I don't know. Like I. I feel like we're constantly compartmentalizing, right? And 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 the bleed yeah. over from stuff. And again, I, I think for those out there who who do take this stuff seriously, and and we do, um, there there are plenty of people out there who are okay, you know, being like, I, I want to play the game. I'm not, I don't want to. And and I, I think that is a, a also a choice. Um, you know, like I have family members when I'm talking to them, like, what's going on? I'm like, woof. And they're like, oh wow, no, I I don't really. I don't really get into, you know, I see the name on the box and not who makes it or, you know, what happened right. there and, or I'm not in that community. I'm not there, but that's not, that's we're a pretty dedicated enthusiast site. And and that means yeah. people, people are going to know who make the, the games and it's, um, 
It's a wild time, and and like you said, I, I, it's 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 throughout a lot of stuff. I look at the board game community. There's stuff in there. I look throughout the you know, even oh my gosh, even in like the Transformers collecting community, like it's there's stuff. Uh, anyway, I'm venting. I'm, I'm I'm sorry. I'm venting a bit because it's been it's been a time. Uh, and if this time here for us is nothing else, it is probably just deeply personal flaws and all. Uh, you know, our time here, uh, and that's just kind of I think where my head is at and. Um, you know, it's, 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 some of this stuff is really hard. It's really hard to talk about. Yeah. It's really hard when people look to you to be like, well, I'm going to take you know what you say very seriously or with some kind of authority. And here I am being like, I'm, 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 I'm just trying to talk about this stuff. And like, I'm an idiot or I don't, I don't want to play that. I'm an idiot card, but like, I, I don't have a degree in any of this stuff, abuse, mental health. Uh, uh, I'm a fine arts major. You want to have a discussion whether games are art? I can get into you with, with that. You know, that's... Ay, ay, ay. Um, let's talk about the news. Sorry. Sorry for venting. It's just, no, uh, just kind I of think vomiting it, it needed, out there. We needed to get that out there. I think we, we absolutely had to. It's It's been just bubbling up in ways that are like... Ay, ay, ay. Um, here's something else that made me mad. Uh, Ch- Chuck E. Cheese is filing for well. bankruptcy. And I don't, okay. I, I don't want, I'm going to yell. My kids are probably doing a piano lesson. I don't want Chuck E. Cheese to go out like this. Not because of the pandemic, not because of COVID, because they suck. Because Chuck E. Cheese sucks. Not because like nobody's going to a Chuck E. Cheese because they can't touch the shitty games that are there. They, I, I, I am, um, for the employees that work at Chuck E. Cheese, I'm very sorry. Uh, if they they have filed for bankruptcy and for people whose lo- whose livelihoods are are touched by that, I'm very sorry. Except for Mr. Cheese, but like that place, that place. The last time I was there, it's crap. And like, yeah, I mean, it was crap when I was a kid in the '80s. Yeah, it was never. It was. It. They had a. They used to have like a little door where the kids go in, and that was cool. And then they'd have a bigger door that the adults go in, and like that was a cool thing. I, I thought that was cool. Well, the that's... pizza was cardboard. Yeah. The ball pit was a disease vector. They yeah. never had good arcade machines. <laughs> like, it was just it was it was a garbage place to have a garbage party. Yeah, and pour they, one they, out for ball pits. Let uh, me tell you. I feel like the best thing now, and I'm not going to malign Chuck E. Cheese for for the past because when you're a kid, it's where a kid could be a kid. But today, as of when I had kids, as a as a uh, uh, a parent who has to bring a kid there, I thought it was I thought it was not fun, and. Um, and I, and I started just thinking, wow, maybe the legacy of Chuck E. Cheese is just Five Nights at Freddy's. Like maybe that's yeah, the... yeah, that's that's what it'll morph into when the history books write the record. <laughs> yeah. uh, I look, man, I, this is the great accelerant. That's what this whole event is. Oh, uh, is this is this one of those those Bain Capital greatest hits of of Vulture Capital coming in and just bleeding the company dry, or is this just literally a case of the 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 finances just not being sustainable in the middle of a place where they can't have people come to their restaurant? Well, it, to what's to say is it can't be both. Ago, to Alex, could, to your point a couple of weeks ago when you talked about the the, the the movie theater business, like yeah, the this is the great accelerator. Like this is what's happening, and I. You know, like, look, it's that's not the excuse or reason for every facet of of business, but it seems to be like things that were maybe in a precarious situation before COVID are now uh, kind of being, you know, expedited, if you will. Right. The last the last load bearing pole got kicked out and now there's just no there was nothing left to hold it up. I, I mean, you know, that's that is what seems and appears to be happening. Yeah. Well, like I said, look, no one wanted to see it go down like this, but let's <laughs> let's be real. Like, was anyone here actually ever excited to go to a Chuck E. Cheese in the last decade? I was in the last decade. Like I said, I was excited to be like, oh man, Chuck E. Cheese, that might be okay. And then it wasn't. It wasn't okay. Uh, they had the the you know they don't count tickets anymore. They have those things where you feed the tickets in, and even that thing, which a thing that should be fun, kind of sucked. Um, um, yeah, I yeah. mean, you seem to be. Like sort of irrationally <laughs> pissed off at God, I've got Chuck E. Got, cheese. Yeah, yeah. Did you get burned? Did you get burned real bad? Like, um, there, like the games there that give the tickets is like they not fun. I don't know. It, it a, a place that has video games. <clears throat> Chuck E. Cheese for a kid 
for me. Okay, I'll explain to you why, Jeff. Yeah, I, because that's what I asked. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> as a child, as a yeah. child, I had, I had a family member who rented an arcade for their birthday. Just like mm-hmm. a mom and pop I had a, arcade? I had a cousin. I don't remember. I was like four, let's see, eight. eight. Uh, they rented yeah. an arcade, I think, and then, uh, but my memory is all the games were set to free play and go play whatever you want for an hour. Sure, sure. Wow. Know, yeah. Wow. It's like wow. my favorite birthday memory in the world. And so I the, remember the one I did too. Yeah. So the, so the closest thing I was like, man, I'm going to go to this because arcades now are mostly like, um, uh, DDR machine. I haven't been to an arcade, so this is going to say how long I've been to an arcade. I mean, it's just mostly light gun games. Last time I was in an arcade, it was mostly light gun games and DDR machines and cabinets like that, right? Well, just pause right there. Pause yeah. right there because there there are two budding sort of things right now. There is the retro, you know, the yestercade sort of place but think, that seems to be doing pretty well before this. Yeah. And, and then the, you know, the 11 foot tall Pac Man kind of shit. <laughs> right. So the Dave and Buster style. Right. Or or the beer garden style kind of thing where it's just like, oh, okay, this is an arcade where you go and you get chicken wings and beer. <clears throat> so Actually, it's like you also just described you just described Dave and Buster's also. That's definitely <laughs> beer chicken. Yeah. We'll just okay, we'll just okay. so one is one is, chi- one is chicken wings and beer and a giant stand up flappy bird machine, one is chicken wings and beer and a joust machine. Um right, okay. And, and, got it. Got it. And uh, two different bird games, two different scenes. And then uh, Chuck E. Cheese, I was excited. Like, oh, I'm going to buy like 30 bucks worth of tokens, and this is going to be awesome. We're going to have an arcade adventure. And like, imagine that sucking. Imagine having all those tokens where at the end of the time, my kid is like, I don't even know what to do with these. I don't even know what to do with these. Like, do I, I don't put- have to imagine that sucking because I went to Chuck E. Cheese when I was a kid. <laughs> I had that exact experience in like 1989, uh, man. It was always like that. All right. All right. You, you talk about margins and stuff yeah. before with like, you know, Alex, your your local spot having a close up shop. We were talking about that off air, but yes. Were we? Yeah, that was that was an off air conversation, but like, it wasn't or it wasn't anything, you know, per, no, personal. It was just standard, really, it was we, were, we were talking about businesses and how they are just having a hard time surviving through all of this. Um, you know, it's like, man, maybe that is why, like, you go to Chuck E. Cheese and you can't get out of there not spending two hundred dollars, or like, you know, I, I don't know. I feel like we were at a well, we went to a bowling place back in February. And it was one of these like newer kind of bowling places where, you know, they, uh, they serve you like food at your lane. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, we bowled like three games. Yeah. Uh, $300. Game, $300. Looked at the bill and it was like 280 <laughs> Yeah. A, a bowl, like, a, a, the, the price shouldn't be more than your bowling score, I think. I think that's and where I'm just uh, like, I, I just like picked up the receipt and I'm looking at my wife and I'm just like, what the fuck did we just do? <laughs> What was this? Also, you own this bowling alley is, now. Is this floor marble? Yeah. Like what? Anyway, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, anyway, like if, if you feel for the people who are, you know, inevitably going to be laid off as all of this, you know, yes, and, and of the workers that ultimately are the ones that end up suffering. But let's just be real: Chuck E. Cheese as a business was always a money pit. Um, and also, who knows? They filed for bankruptcy. I, I always feel like. Uh, I have this notion that that means you're going out of business. It does not. It, you know, who not knows? Chuck, Chuck E. Cheese could be back in 20. It's, all, it's known as a pivot. It's a pivot. Yeah. It's a pivot um, all right. Let's uh, let's put it. Uh, let, well, let's put that the rest, and we'll say uh, I just mentioned a little briefly. Andy McNamara. Speaking of places that are. Well, this, I could, there's no way to get out of that one. That sounded uh, rough. <laughs> on, on the bubble, uh, 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 people might remember GameStop did, uh, did has had a tough time. They've I feel like they've declared bankruptcy, uh, but I I could be just conflating that. Um, but Game Informer, which is owned by GameStop, had layoffs, uh, uh, big layoffs, and uh, Andy McNamara, who's been there for uh, the dawn of time. Um, and mm-hmm. I think I think it's 29 years, which is a long yes. time. It's a long time. Yeah. Uh, That's got to be the longest tenure in like games media history. It has to be. Yeah. So uh, uh, Game Informer had layoffs. They continued to to go uh, with the magazine and and uh, online content uh, with some staff there. But Andy McNamara is stepping down as editor in chief uh, after 29 years. I believe he has said he may stay within the games industry, but not in games journalism. So. 
um, I wish him the best of luck. Boy, man, that's a long run. I you're next, Vinny. <laughs> but I think about like, oh man. So I've been I've been I've been doing this for about 15 years. And like another 15? Are you out of your mind? Are you out of your mind? Are you out of your mind? 15 more years? Oh my goodness. What does that look like? What does that look like? I'll tell you what I look like. I'll I, this is it'll be a mess. I, I don't know. 15 Oh You'll my gosh. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. You're going to go another 30. I know you, buddy. Yeah, because there's no such thing as retirement anymore. So, yeah, so yeah, yeah, that's exactly that's right. That's the real problem. That's exactly right. Um so anyway, uh, so yeah, best of luck to Andy. I hope uh, I hope he finds uh, <laughs> hope he finds peace and happiness in what he has next. Uh, and I also I hope the staff of Game Informer um, uh, figure it all out. And you know that sounds like a, maybe I, I don't want to say I don't want to malign what's going on there, but from the outside it seems precarious. I, I you mm. know it's no other way to put it. Um, uh, it sounds like Andy Reiner is going to take over the position of editor in chief. Um, yeah. Uh, best of luck, best of luck to Mr. McNamara. All right, we actually do have some other news. Um, that's the Chuck E. Cheese. Okay, let's talk a little bit about that whole, thing was Chuck e. Cheese. The whole thing was micro uh, Microsoft. The whole thing was Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, boy, this three day weekend. I cannot wait. Um, Microsoft news. Okay, let me. Sorry, I'm going to pull these things up one at a time here because I've got three stories. Okay. Um. So the first one I have here, Xbox Summer Game Fest. Have you guys heard about this? Yes. Uh, Xbox Summer Game Fest from Microsoft. Apparently, they will be having demos of not released games yet available for the public to play. Um, uh, they're saying somewhere between 75 and 100 titles. Uh, stuff like Destroy All Humans, Haven. I don't know what Chris Tales is. Uh, Hellpoint, Skatebird, The Veil, Shadow of the Crown, whole bunch of stuff. Neat. <laughs> I don't know. That's what, that's all I have to say. Uh, neat. Uh, it sounds like this stuff is going to be available from July 21st to July 27th. Uh, also, uh, Microsoft still has a TBD event uh, that we're um, hopefully going to see in July. I don't know if there's dates out there yet. I haven't seen anything out there publicly um, but yeah, I don't know if they'll, they'll promote that more. I assume that event will be not timed exactly with this. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I, I will say for my part, I've always been surprised that companies didn't do more demo things like this around like E3 time or, or similar shows because it just, I don't know, like you've already got these vertical slices. I understand it's not no work at all to, to, to make this happen, but like, this always felt like a great way to be like, Hey, you heard, you know, us talk about these games on the show. Here's, here's a taste, try them out, check them out. You know, yeah. demos as a jet and in general are like a weirdly forgotten thing that I feel like not nearly enough companies want to try and do. But like, I feel like I, whenever I do find demos for stuff, I inevitably end up trying stuff and I'm like, Oh, this is cool. I should definitely buy this when it comes out. Right. I mean, yeah. Uh, it did feel like it was a thing that was kind of coming back. I feel like maybe around the time of like PT mm. a little bit. <laughs> uh, That's the worst example you could use. They well, pull, no. pull it back down. Uh, well, because that game never came out is, is why. I realized yeah. that, but you talked about generating interest in the <laughs> yes, thing. Yes, that was a good buzz uh, generator. But here's the thing, right? It, it does go back to about, it go, goes back to the question of, I guess what it must be. And again, like you said, Alex, it's not nothing to put a demo out. Definitely but not. Time. Uh, you know, I think a lot of it is weighing the risk of are we generating interest just by showing or are we generating interest by letting people play? Yeah, and right. That is ultimately what I probably think is the deciding factor now faced with, you know, these these things that have forced people's hand. Um, we're getting I, those demos. I, th I think demos, uh, I'll be curious to see how this whole thing goes and what the kind of um, the demos are and for what the full scope of this thing is. Because, you know, that could be a tough thing for a developer whose game is pretty, is not ready to be released or ready to be code locked to make sure it's optimized because you put a demo right. out and then if it runs well, but the game doesn't run well in the, in the final build or stuff needs to be cut, I think that could be a little tough. I'm not saying it's impossible, but, you know, 
a lot of developers are crunched and uh, literally crunched uh, and uh, kind of pushed as it is. And I, we had always heard stories within the industry of even getting a scripted demo for an E three stage was tough enough. So making sure that oh yeah, no, nothing leaks from a demo. Nothing, everything's airtight. You know, uh, is there's there's stuff. no question. It's more work. It's a lot more effort. But you know, it's one of those things where like I feel like if you planned for it and you know you 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 built your your pipeline in such a way that like you were planning to put this stuff out there for people to try like it's mm. that's better than just trying to throw it together at the last minute which you know I, I i don't know i i i understand it's a lot of work but i just i i there have been a lot of games over the years that i would not have tried had i not gotten to you know play a demo of something and being like sure. oh yeah. this is fucking cool oh. i wouldn't have played i would not have dug into near automata if mm. i had not played the demo they put out on on ps4 for that so i i, just, I, I would I love it's if, worth it yeah i would love if demos come uh, come back full steam um all right uh second story i have here is about the we've talked about this before the optimized for xbox series x this is stuff that is releasing um this generation but will be playable with uh, some kind of uh, optimizations or boosts on the next generation console, the Xbox Series X from Microsoft. Microsoft put out a full list of games that will be optimized for Series X. I'll read down some of them, uh, maybe not all of them, but uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, uh, Bright Memory Infinite, Call of the Sea, you know, I'll just read them all. Chivalry 2, Chorus, Cyberpunk 2077, and they kind of got out ahead of that one as well. Destiny 2, Dirt 5, FIFA 21, Gears 5, Halo Infinite, Hitman 3, Madden NFL 21, Marvel's Avengers. By the way, did any of you watch the Marvel's Avengers stuff? Yeah. yeah. I, it didn't do much for me. It didn't. Yeah. It no. looked really like um, button. I don't know. Uh, we'll probably. I just didn't get much out of it. Yeah. Uh, we'll have a place to talk about that, hopefully, uh, in the not too distant future with all the stuff we didn't cover that came out of the Naughty 3. Uh, Outriders, Scarlet Nexus, Scorn. That's the one. That's the alien. That's one? the that's okay. the weird horny game. Yes. Uh, second extinction, the ascent, the medium, a vampire, the masquerade, bloodlines two, and Alex Yakuza like a dragon. That's not the full name, Alex, like <laughs> Yakuza. Yeah, Yakuza like a dragon. Yes. Um, that's uh, that's the list they have for stuff that should be optimized on that series X. Um. What's the other thing? Oh, and then there was, okay. Boy, sometimes, you, a lot of times in my life, I just wish Brad Shoemaker were here. Uh, and this is one of them. Uh, the, okay. you know, I, I say that I mean, a lot. I could, I, could, I could try and lower the <laughs> register of my voice a little bit if you want to you get that effect. There are many times I say that in my life, and this is one of them. So the um, the Xbox Series X. Yeah. The Xbox, bad name. I still hate it. Um, usually mm -hmm. those things wear off on me, and I just get used to the name. Not yet. It's still um, bad, yeah. The Xbox, are you guys ready for the Xbox Series S? No. Okay. Absolutely not. Uh, so uh, we talked about a code name Lockhart. This is the thing that is potentially still not, I think, officially confirmed by Microsoft, <laughs> but all but... All but confirmed. Uh, the kind of digital version is what people are still speculating of the Xbox so like the Series X. the version? Yeah, this is what yeah, I'm but, talking about. But I think the, the indication is that it is also not as powerful. Th so nothing official out there yet about this. Mm -hmm. so, um, so word coming out now is that uh, possible uh, confirmation of this in August. Um, possible uh, stuff... Uh, coming out of um, the um, latest Xbox SDK documents, pretty much all but confirming this and, and possibly a little bit more uh, information about it. It's still really sparse, though, uh, and in a way that I'm not, I feel like I'm not up on exactly what this is because it, it, nobody, there's no official word yet on this. It's, it's yeah. mostly, mm -hmm. uh, but according to some of those documents, Xbox Series S could be the name that we're going with instead of Lockhart, which is a code name. Um, and uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I didn't know. think they were going to stick with Lockhart on that one, but I almost wish they did. Um, I think that was the name of my elementary school, by the way. Actually, go ahead. I'll have to go change all my, uh, what was the name of your ele elementary school? Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah, well, uh, 
we'll see how that thing goes uh, and what they, they announce. I feel like there's there's like this suspended note right now with Microsoft that they just need to have their July event and get some. I'm going to mix a lot of metaphors. Get the make the rubber meet the road here on this one and start getting some traction because we have we're sitting on the Sony stuff, which I think they. Again, I think they did a great job showcasing why you should get a PS5. We had Microsoft have their third-party event, which was didn't blow my uh, socks off, and I want them to have a great event here. I think they are doing uh, a fantastic job on the services end of stuff with with Game Pass and um, the um, what are they calling the thing where it goes up and down? You buy the game and it's on uh, the smart delivery stuff, and you know I think yes. I think they're doing a good job on that messaging. I just I want to get out there and and see what these systems are um, running. You know what what these games right. are look like on these systems. All right, um, and some of that first party stuff. So hopefully they have a date. Hopefully we see that stuff sooner than later. Uh, I'm tired of the rumor stuff. Uh, this was an interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting thing. Uh, I pulled this. Uh, I'm going to pull up the article because I didn't have a chance to dig too deeply into it before we got going. Uh, but uh, apparently NBA 2K says the the game might be... <sighs> There's a possibility that these ga- the game's going to be $70. Oh, please. No, it's $69.99. Sorry, $69.99. What, uh, did you guys look at this? Yes. Yeah, I did. Uh, so for next gen stuff, sorry, I should I should be clear for uh, stuff on the PS5. For the PS5 and the Series X version, yeah. they they are priced currently at sixty nine ninety nine. Um, should we not be reading too much into this? Is this are, are we due well, for an increase? It is kind of specific though. Like yeah, the way this Polygon story lays it out is they they kind of pin it on the quote unquote cross generational nature of this kind of game right so it i mean if you kind of skim it and you and you read through it says like you know is this basically a ten dollar upcharge for smart delivery right yeah but but then what if you're just getting right what if you just want the game on the ps5 yeah yeah. i mean that's so here's here's what i can say is that you know i is this the first game specifically listed for PS5 and, and Xbox Series X that has a price listing? I haven't done that research. I couldn't. I don't know. Okay. I, uh, so he, here's here's what I do know is that it's not, to me, the idea of games being $70, obviously not ideal, but mm. it is something that has been talked about for years yeah. because there has been a lot of talk among publishers, among major developers, that the $60 price point was no longer covering, you know, the 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 astronomical costs that some of these games have when they yeah, are made the development and the sustainability costs. of that was just not reasonable. Now th- that said, it's interesting that NBA 2K is the, the first one out of the gate with this because that is a game and a series that has become so <laughs> lousy with microtransactions and virtual currency and all that bullshit to the point where they literally had to try and dial that shit back last year because people got so mad about how that stuff was implemented the year before. Hmm. And the thing is, I don't necessarily think this is going to offset any of that. <laughs> like, this is not a game that I think they were like, oh, well, now that it's $70, we're going to stop doing this microtransaction. Like, no. no, not at all. They have hit a rich vein of, 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 of revenue with this stuff. And it, they know, they know that no matter how lousy with that shit they get, people will buy that game because it's the only game on the market of any, like, I, I'm not, I, we don't know when live is coming out. It's completely scattershot when when they make NBA live games anymore. So, and the basketball in those games is still very good. So people will still go and they will play it and they will grit their teeth and occasionally engage with that shit. Or if you're super into it, you will buy it all the time. And you'll spend all this microtransaction money on it. They're not going to jeopardize that just by 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 putting the price up. They're not going to say that like, oh yeah, we can just stop doing this stuff because we we were you know we're playing. It is, people are spending more on the game up front. Like, 2K making this move, it, it actually just feels the most correct because it's clearly them just singing like, yep, nope, you're going to pay us. We know it. Do it. Give us the money. We know you're going to pay us. So just do it. Stop, don't complain. Just do it. Hey, um, I, 
It's so game. I don't pro- know. I don't game, know what yeah. to make of it until other companies start like giving their prices and start talking about what if, is this going to be the standard price or not. I don't know what to make of it other than 2K is making a calculation here and they're saying that yeah, you're gonna buy it at that price. So okay, I'm gonna lay some stuff out here. I'm gonna, this is again, d- whoever said doing live podcast was a good idea was wrong. Okay, so I'm gonna lay some stuff out here live. <laughs> 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 they were just wrong. They're absolutely wrong. It's 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 uh, empirical fact it is worse doing this live. Um, okay, game prices have not gone up in like 25, 30 years, right? Ish. Uh, in, in anything, I'm they, say, let's let's say like twenty, just to be safe. In some yeah. cases, they've gone down. Um, you know, you look at like some PC games and stuff on on Steam and across the board and other platforms, they've gone down. Um, and you know, I paid whatever it was eighty dollars for Street Fighter on the SNES. Some some of those games mm-hmm. were were more money. So development costs have gone up, clearly. Staff have gone up. Uh, the amount of uh, hardware technology and expertise needed to make these games, the amount of uh, expertise uh, required from the um, developers for the amount of art assets, the amount of talent going into these games is exponentially more than it was when it was literally just like five people, maybe fewer, making a game. I'm not saying they weren't talented. I'm just saying the amount of talented people that have to go in to make those games. The market is bigger. So instead of selling thousands of copies, you can sell hundreds of thousands of copies. So that's also changed, right? And I think that's how they've been able to get by because at uh, $60, instead of selling uh, quantity X, they sell now quantity X to the 10th power and they hopefully get more return on that initial investment uh, through the the expansion of the gaming industry as a, as a whole. Games, uh, most games that you buy, big AAA retail games, have some kind of uh, extra buy-in. Whether it's a battle pass, whether it's DLC, whether it's a season pass. So uh, the actual all-in cost of the content on a game has gone up. Uh, sure. Stuff that if you are like, I want to be... At, at, I'm not a developer, and I've said that a million times, but I think the cost of some of that additional content once you have the initial sunk cost of the assets and engine is hopefully less so they get a bigger return on that stuff right it's basically right. your sunk cost on your assassin creed assassin's creed and then if you put dlc out uh, hopefully the cost is less the whole cost uh you know they usually charge less for that as well but you know it's probably not nearly as much as the initial cost um yeah. so uh Game developer uh, and artist and everybody involved salaries. You know, we've discussed unionization a lot and uh, being able to have an industry that is tenable and sustainable and keep your best talent in it. And that has a lot to do with salaries as well and cost of living and making sure that people can survive and making sure that money is distributed. So that has a lot to do with how much money you make. It also has a lot to do with how they distribute the money in a gigantic corporation. But uh, Well, and, and let's be clear. The talent is not necessarily where a lot of that money is going. Well, that's what I mean. That they, as it also yeah. has a lot to do with um, you know how that stuff is distributed in a big company. A lot of it goes to marketing, yeah. PR in people's pockets that maybe didn't. Yeah, you know, let's in, say shareholders, shareholders take up a yes. significant portion of where that money goes. Uh, so yeah, I think there's there's a lot of stuff going on that is maybe a little bit more than like games going up by ten dollars. But that all being said, oh, also I'll add this part in. I'm at a place now where I feel comfortable for me personally in my 40s with where I'm at with my family being able to support a $70 AAA game price. So I'm comfortable with that. A lot of people won't be. Uh, and, uh, you know, I respect that. Um, but I think I'm I'm willing to take that increase for some of that other stuff uh, for me personally. If I feel confident that a price increase is actually going to benefit stuff in a meaningful way and it's not just going to prop up an mm-hmm. already barely sustainable uh triple a industry uh for a little bit longer then sure but like right now i don't have any evidence one way or the other of that all i have mm-hmm. is a company that is known for wanting to squeeze every last drop of blood from the stone they have uh year after year with with the microtransactions and the way that they 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 you know they they build that stuff into their games yeah I just I I don't I don't have the confidence it's, to feel like this is oh this is like a good course correction and not yeah. just them being like yeah we can pull this off so let's fucking do it. I agree. It's 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 also not the greatest time as we hit record uh, unemployment and have um you know people basically uh fighting to get by to to live at this point. Uh you know it's it's going to be tough for a lot of people. I mean it's also worth talking about like you know it's been right it has been 15 years right like at least that's n- 
you know, um, inflation is definitely a thing. I mean, I realize oh, like, you mentioned yeah, that, and, and that's and, fine. And, and like, people in the chat were, were, were pointing out that, like, I think the last time pricing in games took a standardized leap was at the PS3 360 era. That's when it went from 50 to 60. So, but, you yeah. know, obviously back in the day, there were a lot of games. There wasn't necessarily like a, you know, unified price point for a lot of stuff because, you know, cartridges, depending on what chipsets were in there, sure. were more expensive. You know, it's just that. But I think that what was that 2006, 2005 well, five, when that yeah. that happened? Yeah, it might, so. it might, 360. Right? It might have been even after that. There was a while there where the PC versions were still fifty dollars, and the the console yeah, right. versions were. There was, 60. A, I remember that. there was there was like a little of an overlap, yeah. kind of time. Yeah, yeah, and it was like fifty bucks, and then um, and then the console versions were sixty, and then that's kind of uh, um, kind of even out. And also, uh, portable games used to be. Um, um like 29.99 you know like ds games or, or whatever yeah. not mm -hmm. even ds game, but it, the portable games used to be like 29.99 and now I, they're pretty much are they 50 i can't even remember or or, or they're just all 60 dollars at this point i don't yeah. think they're 60 well, okay. what is the portable what game, game now what, what's the portable <laughs> game? i don't know what, what no, also is. what game is at, like other than you know like smaller releases that don't necessarily yeah. like have like long-term like post-release content plans what game is actually 60 dollars anymore like well, that's, what game that's what if I mean, you want full know. experience is actually sixty dollars in that triple A space these days? The Last of Us. Yeah, I guess they did say there's no DLC coming for that one, but there was there were also like a pre order edition where you got a bunch of bullshit attached I'm, to it as well. I mean, I'm sure you could buy one with like. I don't it, know. There's absolutely a digital Something deluxe crazy. edition. Um, be, I'm like sure there must have been. Right? Plus, you, plus sure you pay the something. emotional cost. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, what's the inflation for that? <laughs> it's, it's you can't you can't you can't afford. But like it, but. even if. It, even if you go strictly and solely by inflation, seventy dollars doesn't even make up for it, right? So, yeah. Uh, so I, yeah, we'll we'll see. It's an interesting topic that um, it's it's a, whether or not this is the uh, a signal that games will be more expensive. Uh, while relevant, it's still a topic that we at some point has to be talked about because um, yes. And look, very clearly, we're not economists, but at the same time, we have our feelings about like what and notions about like where this money is going and what yeah. it's actually going to do for anyone. So it's like I think treating this with some healthy suspicion uh, <laughs> is is not unwarranted. Sure. I mean, you know, I also think like, when, you know, people ask me, friends of mine, like, oh, should I play X or Y or whatever it is? And it's like. There's a lot of answers to that. The answer that comes out of my mouth the, the most often is, yeah, but wait till it goes on sale. <laughs> and I'm not saying that like that's, you know, I, I, I'm. I, but that's how a lot of people consume games. That's just and the that only is, way they can. And, and that is, and to me, it's it seems kind of intelligent to go that route just because of the speed at which a lot of these games do get discounted. And well, the, the, you know? it's also a, it's been an amazing thing. And, a, you know, Sony has their PlayStation Plus, but really the Xbox Game Pass and PC Game Pass stuff has been <clears throat> if any time a consumer feels like they are getting away with something, I think the a company must feel like they're doing or at least it right. the illusion of it. That's right? what I mean. That's right. They, you absolutely yeah. are not, but like, yeah. but the um, illusion is fun. And there are some times where I'm like, man, that's on Game Pass already. Dang, I gotta, yeah, I gotta go. Uh, I gotta go get on that. All right, um, more to come on that. I'm for sure. Um, <laughs> uh, boy, I, I mean, wonder. As I soon as more games start putting their prices yeah. out there, yeah. Like I wonder yeah, if I somebody. I think it's a. It's it's a good conversation. Right? Yeah. I think it's something everyone is affected by. So yeah. It's, uh, it's worth having. Um, this was interesting. So N Nintendo got out there and actually apologized for uh, controller drift uh, in the in the Joy-Con on the Switch. Um, so the president of Nintendo, uh, oh boy, Alex, you want to take this one? Is it Shun Shuntaro Furukawa? I have, I have Sorry, never I, said I, that I, person's I'm name before. It's okay. I've never said that person's name out yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, Shuntaro Furukawa. Um, uh, got out there and said um, they ap apologize for any trouble caused to the customers and are continuing to improve its product. They have a class action suit against them. Against them, uh, um, and that was filed in 2019. After that, that's when they started doing the Joy-Con repairs. Uh, and also, I did not know this, uh, but uh, after reading the story, apparently the um, the light is in that class action suit now uh, for uh, Joy-Con drift. I didn't know that Joy-Con drift was a problem in that. Uh, I remember it, yeah. hearing that in the beginning, yeah. 
So oh. my uh, my left Joy-Con just started finally getting the drift. Yeah. Uh, it's, oh, boy. You know, obviously, I've got, I got a couple of good years out of it. But now at this point, when I'm playing Animal Crossing, if I just kind of leave it there, like I will walk from one island side of the island to the other without having to do anything. So it's uh, it's it's pretty intense. So uh, a good apology I saw someone in chat mention that I will I will absolutely echo is uh, maybe stop charging eighty dollars for new Joy Cons then if you really <laughs> feel bad about this. Like maybe maybe just take a loss on those for a little while so people can replace them and not have to go through your fucking asinine repair service. Like just maybe yeah. don't charge that much money for new joy cons what right about now all that just right now. rumble uh i I, man, I mean i can replace them right <laughs> I, I i sent mine in i i had i had drift on mine and i had sent it in and got it repaired um but i also bought a, a second set while that was happening too see i've i've never had the issue i'm starting to see it on my ps4 controllers though oh yeah i had it on xbox really? controllers and ps4 yeah. controllers um but you could oh i'm you could probably do this on joy cons too uh, I've swapped out the thumbstick uh, and done. Oh, like, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure you sure. can do that on. But this is. But that was at, on my Xbox and PS4 controllers. That's on controllers I've had for ages. Uh, you know. And what's your mailing address that you can do this for me? Uh, I'll, 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 uh, Maybe don't put that on the show. I'll post it in the show notes. Just um, see. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Uh, so yeah, I thought that was interesting, especially with a class action suit against them to get out and make a public apology. Uh, we'll see how that goes. All right, we got Chuck E. Cheese. We got the Microsoft News. We uh, um, Andy McNamara. The pricing. Oh, okay. Uh, this. Um, you know, we're getting into the uh, Alex. Before we get into some of this other stuff with a Twitch, mm -hmm. which I have down here. Anything else you want to kick up? Uh, I mean, there's been a few things. So just kind of going back to some of the stuff we've talked about with the, you know, the, the myriad allegations going around the industry this past week, uh, not necessarily a lot of updates on the ones we've already talked about. Ubisoft is talking about forming some sort of like blue ribbon commission thing or something to investigate their company culture and, you know, people who have been accused there. But I mean, it's anyone's guess as to where that's actually going to go. Um, one that did just come up is that the president of, uh, the, of Evo, the, the fighting game tournament has just been placed on leave because it, he got some pretty rotten, like sexual misconduct allegations thrown against him as well. And it's at the point now where I've seen at least one esports team say that they are straight up pulling out of Evo and will not be, you know, will not be participating, uh, I don't like this one's still pretty fresh, so I don't really know where things are going on that. But it seems like it's you know people are rightfully very fucking pissed off about this shit. Um, yeah, that's fresh. Those are those are those are that's like this stuff is all coming kind of coming out right at the time we started. Recording I think last night is when they started coming out. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then um, the, the Twitch stuff is kind of uh, uh near to that, but um. You know, there's been a lot of Twitch kind of doing a similar thing of trying to uh, go in and clean up what's been going on there. Uh, but out of that, um, I, unrelated, again, I, doing this stuff in the, in order, I don't want to necessarily uh, bring these two things together. But uh, Dr. Disrespect was banned, but they did not say why. And he has not said yeah. why. Um, and it was some confusion. Uh, so like uh, maybe having nothing to do with anything, any of that, uh, other stuff of, uh, uh, abuse allegations or anything. Some people thought it was maybe DMCA stuff, but it has apparently come out that it is not no DMCA knows. stuff. No, uh, no, no one actually knows, or the ones who do know are absolutely not talking yeah. about it. So yeah. all we're left to do is wonder and guess, which is not a good thing considering the, the, the kind of shit going on right now. Like, I'm not saying that anyone needs to go out yeah. there and fucking talk out of turn, but like at the same time, it's just it's leading to a lot of very wild speculation about what actually happened there. And then, uh, yeah, the, I, I've uh, heard like every possible story, um, and I none of it. Who knows what to believe? Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's a very weird one where I think they have come out, or Doctor Disrespect has come out and said also, I I don't know why. I. It's baff a little baffling. Apparently, Twitch does not always give reasons for. Um, apparently, it is a ban also, and not a, um, a temporary suspension. So, no, it's yeah, a permanent it's ban. It's permanent. Yeah. Um, that's that's all, one of the only things we do know. 
Odd, odd one, uh, because I would feel like I, I don't follow Doctor Disrespect, and I uh, I don't uh, know the brand that well. I remember the stuff that happened at E3. I, that's about it, uh, up and down as I go with it. Uh, is he making like a big like if if you got banned and this is your livelihood from there? Would, wouldn't you make? Wouldn't you be like sound the alarms of what like what happened here? I don't. I don't. I, at this point, I don't even want to guess. I don't oh, want to guess what's yeah, happening it's, there. It's just, I'm not. It's. It's. I. I don't care enough about him <laughs> in particular fair. to want to like have to that's, bandy that's things fair. around about this. Yeah. It's. It. I agree that it's super fucking weird that we haven't heard anything, but at the same time, it, to what end? Yeah. Like, I don't know. What, I, don't know. I, yeah. I understand. Like, I understand people want transparency, especially for major, major people on their platform, and I get that. Like, you know, if if you're just quietly permanently permanently banning people like him that at some point you know is that going to come up again or are there gonna be more things like that but at the same time it's dr disrespect it is yeah. it is what it like i i, I just I, I don't have the energy for him i don't have it. fair fair enough that is <laughs> i think you couldn't have said it better maybe uh, we'll just move on from there uh twitch again whole lot of other stuff going on there that um is almost too much to get into here well actually is kind of too much to get into here um and uh the uh, some of the last stuff here, Alex. You want to go into this um, crisis remastered stuff news and and the rest of the the business here? Sure. Yeah. The, the, so the crisis remaster has been delayed, and apparently it's at least partially because the trailer they put out got a lot of very negative fan feedback about how that version looked. Uh, so they officially delayed it. I I don't know exactly for how long, but it is not coming. Uh, it is not coming out right away, so it'll. They they've decided to spend some more time working on that. Which okay, yeah, it, it's Crisis. Like you can still play Crisis. I'm pretty sure on a PC if you really really want to right now. If you want to play it on these new consoles, it'll be along eventually. Um, I guess Fortnite is now technically no longer an early access game. Okay, which yeah, that's fine as long as we're as long as we're still attaching things like this game is a released game, this game is an early access game. As if any of that shit matters anymore. Sure, awesome. yeah. So congratulations on your game coming out, Epic. <laughs> I, I, you know what? Um, now that it's out, I think the embargo is up. Now that it's out, right? Okay, so now that uh, it's out, I think Fortnite. I think the battle royale mode is going to really catch on. I think the kind of um, survival stuff. Um, is probably not going to be where people find spend most of their time, but uh, I'm pretty sure now that it's out, I can uh, talk about it. I think the battle royale mode is going to be cool. They can do some cool stuff in there. I think yeah, it's, it's kind of like sure. it's, it's kind of like PUBG, but it's got more building in it. Uh, so yeah, look forward to look. Keep an eye on that one. We'll see. Let's see. Maybe not yeah, my cup of tea. I, I I think a lot of this has to do with their save the world mode, which is not the battle royale thing. Mm -hmm. um, they are still working on that, I guess, to some degree, but it's. It is definitely not the thing that they are putting the most effort into because <laughs> why would you? Your battle royal mode is like one of the most popular things in the goddamn world. Like yeah. I get it. Um, uh, yeah, last so thing, last thing here, just a quick, uh, quick hit. Uh, this was just announced today. Amazon is making a Fallout series. Okay. Why, why not? Yeah. Well, I mean, I could probably think of a few reasons why not, but they're doing it anyway. So Agreed, I, yeah. whatever, I, I can't stop them. There's plenty of reasons. But all sure, all well, those okay. sets and props are already built. Like they're, you, you, That's true. You, you, they just have to go to like a, a studio auction, really. <laughs> really, like right, right. Together right. A like, movie, <laughs> you show, can yeah. kind of whip one also, of those up. It's from the Westworld people. If that, whatever that means to you, I have no particular attachment to that show. That means so something I don't really have any to opinions. me, but okay. Well, you yeah. hate Westworld, right? Is it, Jeff, I can't remember. You either hate it or love it. I can't remember which one. I did, I think it's terrible. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I watched, um, I watched, we did our TV segment already, but, uh, I just reminded me, I watched, um, what we do in we the darkness, back. what we do in the dark, what we do in the dark, what we do in the shadows, shadows, what we do in the shadows. <laughs> in the shadows. Yes. Uh, you don't want to know what I do in the darkness. It's yeah, all nope, around let's me. Move beyond that. Um, you think? so I watched the movie first and then watched the series. Okay. Is that the right thing to do? I don't know. I, but sure. I, did, I did it anyway. Um, mm -hmm. and I, uh, I enjoy it. It's, uh, it's very goofy. Uh, it, oh, is, yeah. it is maybe a little goofier than I was uh, ready for, but um, I, I think it settles into its goofiness and in, in, oh, definitely in, as it goes on. But yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. I think the first watching the movie, then going to the series, it's a it's the, ser the series yeah. is a lot more office than I was expecting, a lot more staring yes. right at the camera. Uh, but then I think it kind of finds a stride, or you just get used to the characters in a way that they I think also. 
they also start implementing like the camera crew into the show in a way that I think is yeah. pretty good. I don't know if you've seen much of that yet, but they actually yes. do a good job. The the one I the one episode I really liked was the night out on the town with the uh, visiting um, the visiting Baron. Oh, with the uh, what's his name? The Baron. What do they call that the Baron. The Baron. Yeah. The Baron. Wearing thought, his New Jersey Devils hat. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I really I thought that was probably the one where I was like, yeah, okay, they made good on a lot of bits here. Uh, that it's a lot right. of setup for this one. Uh, and I thought that was pretty good. All right. Um, is that it for the news? I, that's like, I think it is. It might be it for me. I I, it might be it for me in the news. <laughs> I'm sorry. It'll be yeah. it might Maybe be I'm done me. with the news permanently. <laughs> I want to uh, give you news, Vin. You, what's up? I want to give you some news. All right. Give me the news. Okay. What's up? Are you going to Are you gonna take the news that I want to give you? Uh, open heart. Uh, Backlar. Is it good news? It's Well, judging on your freaking meeting background, I think it's good news. Uh, oh wait! Oh, my meeting back—the background for my thing. <laughs> okay, yeah. I thought yeah. you meant like the meetings uh, that I've missed and not been able to make. <laughs> yeah, there's, no. Uh, I got a new transformer for you. It's a Back to the Future transformer where a DeLorean turns into one of your robots. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> one of your little robots over there. You know, the little the little guys they turn into. One of your Decepticon. Uh, oh jeez. Don't act like you don't know what a transformer I, is. I do, but I don't so it so it is a time traveling Autobot. Uh-huh. Which makes sense because it's the DeLorean from Back to the Future. I don't like right. the way the window looks on the DeLorean. Why is it? Uh, why does why it does it look like that? Why yeah. does so it look like that? It's basically like this weird carved out gridded kind of thing that is not windshieldy in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> why? Why? I think I kind of am okay with almost everything else on it, except why does it look like the window got busted out and they put this like fencing in between it? I don't. I'm not really sure. I, I don't know. I don't know why that looks like that. They probably just couldn't make a transformer that couldn't have that they couldn't do it couldn't figure out a transformer impossible. with a clear windshield it was impossible so they said we either release this delorean like the clusterfuck it is or we don't do it at all and i'm glad they did because uh, i think it's cool i'm still not going to get it because i don't care about transformers even if you slap a back to the future logo on it um but, can, I, can i read what this? if it was a pinball machine what if the transformer was a pinball you machine would you buy your that mouth sir I'm just wait saying. wait i'm By just way, saying like, Make a make a pinball transformer, transformers. Oh, they definitely. There's, there's some diaclone bullshit that'll be. A, uh, listen to this. Um, I'm listening. I'm gonna read this from the story uh, you you sent here. A synopsis of the story, which uh, this first issue comic. I guess there's a comic that's gonna come along. And uh, you should also read exists. the updates at the bottom because those are okay. really funny. Uh, character exists, and it was shared today. This is the synopsis of the story. This is the job I'm going to get making just making crossovers between transformers and any property that's willing to have it. And then writing a synopsis like this. Cause I feel like I can do this as bad as a writer okay, I am. And I'm not trying to undermine the these podcast. writers. Okay, here we go. Marty McFly has just returned to his home, sweet home, Hill Valley, 1985. And everything's looking up. That is until Marty and his friend, doc Brown's time machine attracts the attention of the Decepticons with one small, small mistake. Marty finds himself thrust into adventure to stop the Decepticon plot in the past, present and future. All with the help of a new time machine, the Autobot gigawatt question. Yeah. No, ask me anything. Um, isn't time travel like a thing with Transformers anyway? Okay. All right. Well, let's see. Well, no. Not All really. Right. Not that no. I can think of. That's like almost unbelievable to me. A and, 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 on the outside and, here. and, and, okay, I might be wrong. I'm going trying to go through all the IDW comics I've read and see if they actually have yeah, traveled through time. I'm trying to scratch it out. What's something with John Turturro? Uh, what? I guess was, Beast Wars. Chad is saying Beast Wars had some time travel. I did not. I did not. Okay. I didn't. Yeah, you can't avoid it. You can't avoid it. But again, it. if 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 the if time travel existed in that universe, wouldn't they have gone back in time to prevent the Beast Wars from happening? Uh, people right. love and Beast then, Wars. Never prevent that. I never got into Beast Wars. People love Beast Wars. Uh, maybe so, in the Lost Light comics, they did split the. There were like two. All right. Hmm, I'm sorry. I okay. Asked, but well. Okay. You also, should be. Yeah. I'm, it was, that was my mistake. That's a foul <laughs> on my end. Um. Just some more background information. All right, here we go. Yeah, specifically about the the car's design. You got to know that 
if you the article says that it is actually not a DMC brand vehicle. That means uh, officially. It is not actually a quote unquote <laughs> real DeLorean. Uh -huh. So you're saying the John DeLorean estate will be making no money from this. I guess so, but he's about to sue somebody. <laughs> well, no, he can't uh, sue anyone anymore, but his fa his family perhaps could. So it's it's only a, it's only a, a transformer. It's not a DeLorean that uh -huh. transforms into an uh -huh. Autobot named Gigawatt. No, it's just it's there. That's why they call it their time machine in the in the yeah, comics. It's just like there's, it's just the time machine. Their that time machine. To look Exactly. No. Like look at that windshield. The DeLorean. No Delorean ever had a windshield like that. Everybody I knows mean, that's this. That's their saving grace, right there. I don't know. Uh, it's a Delorean, <laughs> by the way. It's a, it's it, it it's a Delorean. A, it's yeah. a DeLorean. Can I just make, say, make for no the mistake. moment, I have never been more grateful for a more frivolous and stupid conversation than the one we're having right <laughs> now yeah. because it is the first thing, genuinely, all week that has just kind of like <laughs> made my heart just like. Oh, this yeah. is so dumb. I'm so glad we can talk about this. Right, Turning well, to the proper beats per minute. All right, Feels here we good. go. Ready? I'm yeah. going to blow your mind, possibly, uh, Bacalar, because uh, they have done this with the Ecto-1. It has been a Transformer before. No shit. Yep. Okay. Uh, usually we're these still, things actually... We're approaching caring, but still. Uh, you won't care about this, but they've done it with uh, the Millennium Falcon. They've done it with uh, other Star Wars properties. Um, and that's about it. Uh, that's what I could think of. I've got... Oh, I've that's got on my have. shelf behind me... Um, Oh, no, I moved them off did the they, shelf. They're not there. They do I've a got... My Cousin Vinny collaboration. <laughs> no, that's me. I'm working on that one. Uh, <laughs> these two, these, these, no, use, use Autobot youths. I can't do it. It's not, it's not happening. Uh, my, an, my, transfor youth. my, my transforming <laughs> cog is going like this. <laughs> there we go. There's a transformation cog. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, Wheel Drack had a uh, pause attraction. <laughs> All right, we got there. No, um, a Buick Skylark turns into <laughs> a Decepticon. Uh huh. Um, all right. Uh, uh, man, I haven't seen my cousin Vinny uh, in a long time. It is uh, a perfect film. It's not a perfect film because it's the one when I went to California and I had to change my name to Vincent because everybody would say, when I was there to say Vinny, they'd be like, oh, like my cousin Vinny. And I'd be like, okay, no, my name's Vincent. Nice to meet you. I repeat. <laughs> the perfect, a perfect film. film. There's uh, a decent chance I said that to you the first day you walked in the game spot. So let me just go ahead and apologize right now for that. It's okay. You don't have to apologize. It was, uh, it's, uh, I'll tell you what, though. Nobody says that on Long Island, New Jersey, or New York City because they're like, oh, fair enough. My name's Mario. <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah you got it. Um, Please, Mario. Mario. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention, I have now forgotten, and it's probably for the best. Uh, what was I talking okay. about before? It was, was it, was it, Transformer related? Probably. Oh, I have one that changes into a PlayStation and one that changes into a Genesis, and that's cool. Oh, that yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I, it's entirely possible my kid gets into Transformers. I'm not just going to be like, it's no, possible. I'm not going to stop possible. The, the new wrist. the new Earthrise stuff is very good. They look very good. They're very G1. Yeah. You should check them out. There's a new Scorponok on its way. All right. Uh, should we uh, kick it off there, and we'll be back for some emails. Stick around. We're going to take a very short break, and we'll be back soon. Hang in there. Oh, hang in there. I'm still hanging in here. I'm continuing to hang in here. And we're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. Um, okay. Uh, email time. If you got an email, send them into beastcast at giantbomb.com. That is beastcast at giantbomb.com. Abby Russell taking some much uh, deserved PTO. Uh, and so she is not here right now. So I have gone through and picked the emails. <laughs> this, first, this first one. I think, uh, really, Jeff Bacalar, you should read this first one from Adam. Okay. Gloomhaven, here we go. While I listen primarily for video game news, I know that Vinny and Jeff are both prolific board game players as well. I'm not gonna mm -hmm. take that from you, Vinny. I'm mm -hmm. just a you're going go I'm for it. Run with it. You're casual. Yeah, I'm super casual. Want I want to get to where you are, Vinny. Um, I work at Target, and along with the Back to the Future game, we recently started selling a game called Gloomhaven: Jaws of the Lion. 
Whenever we get it in, it never lasts the day and is always selling out. I frequently have people calling about it. I'm kind of curious if you can tell me why it's so popular and what it is exactly. I think I've heard Gloomhaven mentioned before, especially when Austin was on. What is Gloomhaven and is he, what is it? Okay. And have you seen him lately? Yeah. All right. That comes from Adam. Uh, who's picking these emails? I mean, really. All right. So Gloomhaven is a very, very popular game uh, that it was very expensive. It was a Kickstarter. Uh, a lot of miniatures. A lot of people compared it to uh, uh, kind of a, a dungeon, uh, more video game dungeon crawler stuff mapped onto a board game. Kind of had achievements and, and stuff like that. Very, very popular. Still continues to be. Um, and then um, sold out. Uh, came Comes back in stock. Uh, there's an expansion for it. There's a new game, um, uh, Frosthaven, which is a sequel to it. Uh, and a Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion. The reason I picked this email, because I just found out about this, uh, is apparently a streamlined Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven comes in a gigantic box. It's one of the biggest boxes on my shelf. Uh, Gloomhaven, Jaws of, Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion is apparently a much more streamlined, much more refined Gloomhaven experience. It's, a Gloomhaven it, light, if you will. If you mm. will, uh, and appears to be a much more um, accessible and uh, so, but it is a Target exclusive, and that's probably Adam why, uh, or a timed Target exclusive, which is probably why for this month you're getting people constantly calling and asking about Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. I think I pre ordered it from where I get my games um, for August because I think then it goes on, on retail everywhere else. So I think it's a time target exclusive, and that is why you are getting a ton of calls about it. I think uh, the art in this game is fucking dope. Gloomhaven? Yeah. Yeah, the game we're talking about. Yeah. 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 Um, well, there's Frosthaven as well, um, which is the, the similar, similar vein. Uh, and that's in Kickstarter. That probably won't be out for a while. Man, it's a big how- box. It's wild that there is, you know, and and maybe I just don't know any better, but like for Target to have like an exclusive on a board game, that seems they've done it before. They've done yeah. exclusive stuff with D and D. Um, with D and D, they That's did the cool. starter edition, which was I Spire Peak or something. It was one of the starter editions for Five E, the second one, not the Minds of Fandel in the second one, and it was really good. It's a really good starter edition, and they had it. Uh, I want to say they had it on exclusive for a while, and I also might have had. The um, Stranger Things D and D thing on exclusive for a while. They get they get them once in a while, uh, and I'm not exactly. I mean, you sure did a good why. job of explaining why it's so popular. So. so I think that's why. I think that's why. All right, uh, this next one, uh, pretty easy one here. Alex, why don't you take it from uh, JJ? Sure thing. This one from JJ says, "Cold pizza." I grew up in New Jer- North Jersey in a very Italian town with a very Sicilian family. I'm glad they specified because okay. Sicilians <laughs> definitely do not specifically identify entirely as Italian. So there you go. Uh, the beef is real. Yeah. Or wait, is that Sardinians? Is it Sardinians that are like very adamant that they are not explicitly no, Italian? No, it's Sicilians. It's Sicilians too? Yeah. Okay. Um, now, married, living in Vegas. Uh, we ordered pizza the other night and unlike Vinny, had leftovers. <laughs> nice. Wow. Nice. I woke up the next morning to find my wife sitting on the couch eating some toast. I, also hungry, grabbed a slice of pizza and sat down next to her to eat it. She looked at me in disgust and said, what kind of monster eats cold pizza for breakfast? When I asked my friends how they felt about it, they also echoed her disgust. For the record, the pizza selection in Vegas is pretty decent, and the pizza I was eating was New York style from a local place. Crust was good, but the sauce, gravy, was lacking the overpowering garlic that I am used to. Uh, am I a monster? No, 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 no. You can, you, you're no. allowed to eat whatever you want. First of all, you're allowed to eat whatever you want. Second of all, everybody else is wrong. Cold pizza in the morning. I will absolutely. All right. For two things. I'm the monster. You want to hear the monster? Here's the monster. The monsters, oh. monsters right here. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Leave the pizza out. Grab it out of the box in the morning. Don't even put it in the fridge. No, 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 Live. No, no, no. Go ahead. Live I, your life. Live your life. Just, mean, eat, just eat that pizza. You, the, the 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 sand runs out of that hourglass kind of <laughs> yeah. quick. Yeah, like I don't out. know. You're if you're going to bed at Go like ahead. three thirty in the morning Go and ahead. you're waking up <laughs> like hung over at like nine, I could maybe see that. But otherwise, no, nah, put that shit in the fridge. Yeah, yeah, dude, listen, what is, hey, like, why are you? You pass. You passed out. Level? You passed out on the couch. That pizza box is in front of you. You wake up. Grab yourself a slice. You've earned but, it. You've earned but, it. I, I, I take no resp- like- I, I take no responsibility for your health. It's probably bacteria galore and everything like that. You're just like, let's make this as dangerous as possible. <laughs> I understand that. 
Like here's the thing. I'm not gonna say I've never done that. I have definitely woken up from into some very severe hangovers where there was just pizza laying around and I was like, fuck it, that's <laughs> that's sustenance, I'm doing it. But that's not the way I wanna live, is what no, I'm saying. No, no. Uh, but cold no, pizza, you, if you're not doing that, I or questionable if you're doing that. Cold pizza, oh man. That's who's got time to heat that up? Fine. Yeah. Cold pizza is fine. It's not for everybody. I understand the criticism because I just don't, I still will take, you know, m- let me put this slice back on the pan <laughs> on the, on the stove yeah. and get that going for like five minutes. I mean, we're, we live in an age where pan pizza in five minutes is a real thing that you should try out for yourself. Just do it. <laughs> well, uh, it's better than cold pizza. I don't look down on cold pizza. Yeah. I just know you can do better. Pizza in the morning is also a questionable offense for me. It's oh, just like, uh, it's, it's, you know. It the depends only... on a, the level of drunk you were the night before, sure, I think, sure. does, does I get impact it. this. But yes. What's the difference? Are you what's, on like a ski trip or are you, in, are you in your own home? What's the difference between a like cold that? pizza? What's the difference between a cold pizza and an omelet with a, a, a toast and cheese and tomato on it? It's all the same ingredients, well, man. What? Well, also, one has been made presumably right yeah, at the moment when you are levels of getting ready to eat it. It's it's whereas the other the one arrived in your it. home the night before. Thank you. Yeah. I rest. I rest my case. Thank you for agreeing with me. Yes. Also, also, the defendant also, is guilty. Also, <laughs> also, who wants a cold omelet? Nobody wants a cold omelet. That's actually bad. Uh, that, also, uh, takes on uh, microwaving your that pizza in the morning. I feel like if you microwave that pizza, you have five seconds to eat it, or your you know, that pizza is now turned to pizza, that's rubber. The crime. That is the crime. <laughs> is the microwave yeah. pizza. The cold pizza is not the crime. <laughs> it's not, wrong. Like, you know, it's fine. I just, I don't necessarily understand cold pizza in the morning. Yeah, it's fine. fine. Pizza now overnight, I, I, I can't get on board with that. But like, I've been in a situation where like, I'll stroll into like some sort of event, maybe like two hours later where there used to exist steaming hot pizza out of the oven uh-huh. and it is now room temperature. Mm-hmm. And I'm not above the fact of just being like, is this cool if I grab a slice? Like that kind of thing. I mean, you know, God bless you. This, but, you know. Here's the thing. You deliver me a pizza. I want it hot. If I'm yeah. eating that pizza after the initial window of whenever I got that pizza, I don't actually want to reheat it. I don't care enough. To, there you it, go. It tastes exactly the way I want it to when it's cold. I want the hot pizza up front. I want the cold pizza later. That's what I'm looking sure. for. Uh-huh. That's here's, here's what I do. When I've ordered a pizza and I know it's coming. Yeah. I put the oven on. I used to do that too, and then I used to, but then I got too lazy, and I would stick the whole box in there, and then uh, bo- guess what? That that's not good. <laughs> that's not a good. Box in the oven? Yeah, it's fine because I only put it on like you know I put it pretty low, you know, and it, you I, put it on like a hundred like fifty yeah, degrees it's, or it's, something. It's it's fine. Uh, I but, know, but it's fine. It's, but yeah, but you're right. One time it wasn't that fine, and it smelled bad, and then then I stopped doing it because then you got to take all the slices out and put them on a uh, some like thing and that's and then <laughs> then if you put it if you put them on here's the problem with reheating pizza okay what do you do you got to put the it's aluminum you gotta, it's continuing or, the heat. or, or if you yeah. gotta get, get anything with cheese you got to put either aluminum foil down uh, yeah. uh on everything to make sure the cheese doesn't trip to the bottom yeah. or you or you got and then you know the whole thing it's a it's a process Your complaints are on par with like well i gotta go to the door when the guy gets here and like, <laughs> if i use a high. dish i have to wash it <laughs> you know, uh, here's, here's the only here's the only answer <laughs> ever eat just never eat. Never no eat. Food. Never eat. <laughs> Everything's a problem. Everything's a nightmare. There's always well, it, 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 it's an endless fucking parade of these discussions. Just never eat food. No yeah. more food. All right. Uh, uh, let's go. Let's put in my mouth. I have to chew it. Let's, uh, oh. We got to wrap up here soon. So let's take an easy question here. Uh, uh, Jeff Backler, can you take? We're going to skip down this one from uh, Trevino from Texas. Quick question: Can you tell me the difference between a mage, sorcerer, wizard, and warlock? No. Oh my can. god. Yes. No, it cannot. Yes, everybody can do this. Ready? Let's go. All right. Alex, start. All right. Start with the easy uh, ones. Okay, so uh, a warlock, I'm pretty sure. is. It, are a warlock and a necromancer the same thing, or is no. necromancy just genre of okay, warlock. You're wrong. Keep going. I'm going to say I'm going to say necromancer has to ra- be like raising the dead. Warlock makes a pact with a demon. That's what I'm going to say. But is that a discipline of being a warlock or is that huh. its own thing? I don't think every necromancer is a warlock. 
I think uh, necromancer just uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, it could be anything can get their can get their power from anywhere, but is is raising the dead. And a warlock, I believe, has made some kind of pact to get their power. Okay, well, huh. the only warlock I've ever seen in person was in Salem, Oregon, and he was riding a fucking uh, Segway. So I assume that's what all warlocks are. Uh, wizards are cool things you paint on the side of your van. Uh, sorcerer, <laughs> I think he's got oh, it. Oh, yeah. Nice. Sorcerer is a pretty good metal band, uh, and a mage is uh, I, I someone else do that one. I got nothing for it. A mage is a class I sometimes play in Hearthstone, but I don't play Hearthstone anymore. So I'm gonna say sorcerer. I'm gonna go by. Uh, I'm gonna go by uh, a bit of a traditionalist here. I'm gonna say sorcerer gets their magic power inherently. A wizard studies books to get magic. A warlock is basically somebody who has made a pact uh, with a demon to get their power, and a mage. I'm going to say a mage. I'm going to say a mm, mage say uh, doesn't exist in this universe. A mage is fake. This is a, mages don't exist. That's a made up. That's a magic's not real. All right. Next question. Uh, uh, who, who read that one? That was, uh, I did. okay. Alex, can you take this one from Wes? Yeah, I could do that. You've just finished using the restroom at a friend's place. You wash your hands, but afterward realize that there's no hand towel provided for you to dry them with. Do you, one, dry your hands on their already used bath towel? Two, dry your hands on your pants? Is there a third solution? Yes. yes. You yell at your friend and be like, where are the fucking towels? I don't say it that way. I, well, I you don't know what friendship is. It's true. I wipe them. Uh, so whenever I need to wipe something on me, I use the the small of my back. Interesting. Wow, this is one like, the place that I thought did, did not go. I learned like something do from like this. Chicken wings. Really? You know, do like chicken wings. Yeah. Do like really? this. Huh. I just feel like that part is just never touched by anything <laughs> that matters. And also, as I'm doing this, I'm doing this motion as I exit the bathroom, and I'm just like, Alex. You got no towels, dude. What's the deal? Why is it? What happened? I, I wouldn't wanna, say, where the fuck are your towels? I, I like use the meaning. bath towel. Let's just use it. It's a towel. Here, use the bath it, towel. First of all, no, I'm not touching someone else's bath towel that's been out there. I'm just, I'm yeah, just not doing that. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't like it doesn't matter if it's, oh, it's, it's, it doesn't <laughs> matter if it's reasonable or not. I, I'm yeah, I just like not that. doing it. I don't like that. Uh, I don't like that. The reality is if you are inviting people over to your homes and you have not checked to make sure that you have <laughs> hand towels out, you are a bad friend. Oh, you are wow. a bad host. Wow. You are a bad person. All right. Will you use your own bath towel to uh, dry your hands? Yeah, because it's mine. Okay. Okay. No. no? Oh, I have, well, when you say bath towel, you mean like your shower towel, right? Do you don't call it a bath? Do you say shower towel sounds like more shower uh, towel. <laughs> right. Right. You can't but say it, shower towel? <laughs> I could say it. I don't want. I refuse yeah, to. Yeah. Um, it's like the big, the long one. Like I'm, I'm talking about like the hand towels. The hand towels. Hand are, towels. Are yeah. Fair, fair game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I won't. I won't use your bath towel. You will not use my bath towel. No. Because you, you, and God forbid you touch it and it's like a little damp still, and then you're just like, oh boy, uh, you gotta burn the bathroom down and jump out the window. As far as I'm <laughs> I'll, I will. The answer. All right, I'll just I'll rip off little pieces of toilet paper and start, start drying my hands with them. Um, someone, in, someone in the chat did bring up a good point with my small of the back uh, yeah. strategy. We're like, hey, if you go and sit directly after you know directly on a couch after that that's a bit that's a bit of a dick move but i feel like you mm. you, you just don't sit after that for a little bit I feel, like, that out. I feel like you're better People off at the sit. ankles if you're wearing pants just go to the ankles, the ankles. yeah just the go socks. down what are, you doing? <laughs> what are you doing in the bathroom just take a sock off <laughs> and then throw no, that sock take it off if you're wearing high enough socks, as long as they're not no-shows, yeah. you just wipe them on the part that goes up your ankle to, like, you know, like whatever part of the calf they are. And there you go. You just put the <laughs> pant leg down. You're good. You're golden. Uh -huh. um, all right. I, we got to get out of here. So um, we're going to wrap this show up, I think. Uh, there is a... Should I do this correction? Uh, hold on. I'll play the music then. Let me make sure. Play the music. Let's Let go. We have sure. an actual correction, and it's my fault. Hold on. Oh, Can nice. I, let me make sure everybody can uh, hear the music. Hold on. Ugh. Don't do you heard that? Did you hear that music? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, here yeah. we go. That music means it is time for corrections. If you've got a correction, you can send them into beastcast.giantbomb.com. That is beastcast.giantbomb.com. Alex, what do we have for corrections this week? We have a correction that I, uh, I, I manifested into the world. So this one comes from another Alex. 
And they say, Dear Beastcast, in the last episode, Alex said that cyberpunk takes place in Southern California and that they wouldn't say hella there. Night City is actually in Northern California, where hella is all too common. <laughs> so that is correct. I don't know why I thought it was in Southern California. They are 100% right about that. And I, as, as, as part of that, as part of hella culture, they should get an actor who can read the line <laughs> like it isn't the first time they ever saw the word on paper. Hella. Hella. Uh, I didn't realize, I didn't know that about California. Yeah, it's a, it's a North, Northern California, and I would say the Pacific Northwest uh, terminology. I, 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 anytime I said hella when I was in Southern California, I got weird looks. Uh, I, you know, I don't think it, maybe I was too old by the time it would have come out here, but I don't remember it thinking came it. Out here a little Did bit. it? Okay. It's still here a little bit. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit. A little bit. <sighs> Folks, that's going to do it for this week's show. Um, Night City. Night City. Uh, that's Cyberpunk. It's still on the docket. Uh, we are have we we are if you're listening to this live, we will not uh, be here tomorrow. We have the day off. I encourage all of us, all of you. Uh, when I say you, I mean Alex and Jeff and the rest of Giant Bomb staff to go and take some time off and uh, recharge. Uh, okay. This, uh, yeah, you know, just recharge a little bit. And uh, I wish that was up to you, but, but I'm not. <laughs> it's up to me I'm a little bit. Going, I'm not going <laughs> offline just yet because after Jan's stream, which is uh, coming up right after this, uh, I will be playing another drum stream and I will be playing some Guitar Hero World Tour tonight. So if you want nice. to sit, play, hear some of the songs that never made it into Rock Band from that game, about 33 of them, in fact, uh, we will be playing those tonight. So enjoy. And I gotta figure. Out, I gotta take. Um, I gotta figure out my vacation time. I gotta, you know, we're still accruing vacation time, and and this um, some of this stuff. Uh, boy, I'll tell you, I'm at the point where it's just getting on me, getting on me. I need some um, need some detox time. But where do you go? What do you do? How do you do it? How do you take a break? There's no break. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to hide. There's nowhere to run. I could try and take time off, but then what am I doing? Then I just gotta figure out more games to play with the kids. Um, which is fine. I get, I love my kids. Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna say <laughs> happy birthday, <laughs> happy birthday, if it's your birthday. Still uh, there, <laughs> happy birthday, if it's your birthday. Um, uh, happy birthday <laughs> to my dad. He's it's 70th birthday. It's coming up oh, wow. uh, soon. Uh, happy happy Fourth of July if you're in the states and taking some time off. Um, happy um. Uh, I swear to God, I, I feel like if someone pulled the string on the Vinnie doll and the yeah. line that came out was, I love my kids! <laughs> <laughs> um, now with seven different phrases. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're going we're gonna to get out of here. Also, um, uh, uh, if you, if, uh, Ryan Davis, we miss you. Uh, go post your favorite Ryan moments in there. Go find the video where Ryan uh, uh, calls the Punisher a fucking gun wizard. Uh, I, I really like. <laughs> I really like that one. Uh, all right, I'm gonna go watch. Go watch one of the Connect quick looks that I did with Vinny. Those were with Ryan. Those were very fun. That's a lot of fun. There's a lot of good stuff out there. If you want to post your your favorite videos, I'd appreciate that. Thanks to the mods for uh, a heck of a time we've had on the site with a lot of stuff going on. Remember, be respectful of everybody. Remember, we are humans too here, and we're gonna we're we're trying our best here. We're trying to have a great community. We're trying to. <laughs> not mess up as much as possible and to own up uh if, if we do or to try and uh, do the best by what we do here uh and um uh, if uh, i'm sorry if you work that chuck e cheese i guess that's um that's, i'm not gonna really feel guilty about that one but um you know i do have some time to kill here before this song runs its course so i'll say uh i miss arcades i don't know that's kind of how I feel. Me too. You get the good thing for the tickets. I don't know what that is anymore. It used to be, um, used to be like the little spider rings, but I don't know what kids want these days. All right, folks. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back uh, next week with another episode of the Giant Beast Cast. Thanks, Alex Navarro. Thanks, Jeff Backlar. Thank Thanks you. for being here with me. Uh, stick around later today for Alex playing some drums. And Jan's up next. Uh,